Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Hi everybody, I'm Hannah and it's time for another class in Swedish and today we're going to talk about 10 questions that you should know. So 10 basic questions that are very handy for maybe a friendly conversation, a first time conversation or something similar. So let's get started. Vad heter du? What's your name? And the sample answer could be Jag heter Hanna. Jag heter Hanna. My name is Hanna. Very useful and easy and always good to ask for someone's name and uh, also allows you to maybe learn some Swedish names. We say them a bit differently, even though some of them are similar to similar sounding to uh, other languages. Hur mår du? How are you? Jag mår bra. Jag mår bra. I'm fine. There we had the uh, question and the answer to this. Uh, it's a very good starter. And uh, maybe if you know someone, you'll get more than the I'm fine. But for a nice and polite start of a conversation, it's also um, a sign of interest to ask someone how they are. I think that's similar to most languages. Var kommer du ifrån? Where are you from? Jag kommer från Kina. Jag kommer från Kina. I'm from China. Not that I am, but uh, in my case, I would of course use Sweden and maybe for you it's uh, another country. So, um, but if you travel, I know that you meet a lot of people from different places and then knowing how to ask them where they from is uh, a good conversation starter. And also interesting to find out. Maybe you can ask more questions about uh, where they're from. Var lärde du dig svenska? Where did you learn Swedish? Jag lärde mig svenska på swedishpod101.com Jag lärde mig svenska på swedishpod101.com I learned Swedish at swedishpod101.com Maybe you already guessed this. <laughs> Var bor du? Where do you live? Jag bor i Stockholm. Jag bor i Stockholm. I live in Stockholm. Remember to add the place that you live in and not use Stockholm if you're not in Stockholm. But uh, Stockholm is a very beautiful place, so maybe uh, it's a good idea to move there. It's fun to find out more about where people are from and uh, to hear about their country, I believe. And uh, when you travel in Sweden also, not everybody is from, uh, from Sweden or from Stockholm. Var jobbar du? Where do you work? Ja, jag jobbar på ICA. Ja, jobbar på ICA. I work at ICA. And for you who don't know, Ica is a big uh, grocery store in Sweden. There are others, but this is a very common one. So if you look for a grocery store, you can ask for Ica. Vad har du för telefonnummer? What's your phone number? And to this, you could reply, det är, and then all the numbers. But I think we're going to get to the numbers in another lesson. Det är, meaning it is. And remember the country code if this is someone from, who's not from your country, if you get their phone number. Vad kostar det? How much is it? Det är, it is. Or here's another one you can also use. Det kostar, it costs. Good to know, maybe after sightseeing, what you do is you go shopping for some things and... We don't haggle in Sweden, so you don't have to do the haggling. You just have to ask for the price and you'll get the response to what you're probably going to pay. Gillar du svensk mat? Do you like Swedish food? So here we have both two different answers. Ja, det gör jag. Meaning, yes, I do. Or, nej, det gör jag inte. Meaning, no, I don't. 
And to be real honest, the Swedish cuisine is not my favorite. Um, I prefer Asian food, for example, over Swedish food, but we have a few really good ones. And uh, if you're not in Sweden, maybe you have an IKEA, you know, the furniture store somewhere around, and you can try the Swedish meatballs. They're a traditional dish and uh, kids really like them. But that's a first good start to uh, trying Swedish food. Har du varit i Sverige? Have you been to Sweden? Ja, det har jag. Meaning, yes, I have. Nej, det har jag inte. Meaning, no, I haven't. And if you haven't been to Sweden, I hope you will go. Um, but please go during the summer unless you are into skiing or snowboarding because summer in Sweden is just magical. We have uh, daylight until very late, like almost depending depending on where you go but if you go very far north there the sun is not even gonna set and in the south we have very long days so that's a huge recommendation for you who haven't been to sweden yet and this was the end of today's lesson 10 questions that you should know uh, 10 questions that come in handy for a conversation remember to comment like and subscribe to swedishpod101.com and head over to swedishpod101.com to learn more and i'll see you in the next lesson bye bye now let's take a look at some conversational phrases listen to the dialogue vad jobbar du med Jag är en konstnär. Listen to it again, now with the English translation. Vad jobbar du med? What do you do? Jag är en konstnär. I'm an artist. First of all, you need to learn how to say, What do you do? That's... Vad jobbar du med? Listen to it again. Vad... Jobbar du med? Vad jobbar du med? This Swedish sentence literally translates into What do you work with? But it means What do you do in English? Now, how do you answer this question? This is the pattern you'll need. Jag är en Your occupation. I'm a an Your occupation. For example, I'm an artist. Jag är en konstnär. Jag är en konstnär. Here are a few more professions you can use with the same pattern. Police officer. Poliskonstapel. Poliskonstapel. Teacher. Lärare. Lärare. Doctor. Läkare. Läkare. Engineer. Ingenjör. Ingenjör. Now, listen to some examples. Vad jobbar du med? Jag är en lärare. Vad jobbar du med? Jag är en läkare. Vad jobbar du med? Jag är en ingenjör. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say what do you do? Vad jobbar du med? Imagine you're a doctor. Do you remember how to say doctor? Läkare. Läkare. Say, I'm a doctor. Jag är en läkare. Now answer the question saying that you are a doctor. Vad jobbar du med?
Jag är en läkare. Now, imagine you're a teacher. Do you remember how to say teacher? Lärare. Lärare. Say, I'm a teacher. Jag är en lärare. Now, answer the question saying that you are a teacher. Vad jobbar du med? Jag är en lärare. Now, imagine you're an engineer. Do you remember how to say engineer? Ingenjör. Ingenjör. Say, I'm an engineer. Jag är en ingenjör. Now, answer the question saying that you are an engineer. Vad jobbar du med? Jag är en ingenjör. Well done! In this lesson, you learn new occupation-related vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life. You are now able to talk about your job like a native speaker. Suddenly you get bad abdominal pain and decide to buy some medicine. What are the instructions regarding the recommended dosage on the label? What are the instructions regarding the recommended dosage on the label? The label says that daily dosage, two pills per day after eating, Daglig dosering. Två tabletter per dag efter måltid. Ten phrases you always want to hear. A few nice ones to remember that will probably make you happy if you hear them and that you can use to make someone else happy as well. Du ser bra ut idag. You look great today. Du ser bra ut idag. You look great today. Such a short and easy one, but I believe this is something you can tell anyone and it will always make them happy. So, good one to remember. Jag saknar dig. I miss you. Jag saknar dig. I miss you. I hope you don't get to hear this too much because maybe that means that you're too far away from your loved ones, but of course when you're when you like people you will um, hopefully miss them too sometimes. I guess that's part of the game, don't you think? Du gjorde ett bra jobb. You did a great job. Du gjorde ett bra jobb. You did a great job. I think this one is uh, extra special actually because it's when it's about work or a school project or something, it means that you put an effort into it, like uh, maybe worked really hard and someone tells you that you did a great job, that's, uh, I mean, maybe that's even more worth than uh, money that someone is really happy about what you did. So, use this one. Det kommer en bonus i slutet av månaden. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. Det kommer en bonus i slutet av månaden. There'll be a bonus at the end of the month. 
Well, this one means that you did an extra good job, I think, if someone is willing to, to give you a bonus um, or if that you worked hard enough to earn that well-deserved bonus. So good on you if you hear this. Du är en utmärkt kock. You're an excellent cook. Du är en utmärkt kock. You're an excellent cook. Well, personally, I'm not that into cooking, so honestly, I'm not sure if I get to hear this too much. Um, but if you like cooking, I hope you get to hear this from people trying out your food. I'm sure you do. Och du vinner. And you win. Och du vinner. And you win. I hope that um, you sometimes win, um, but maybe not all the time, because maybe that would make people around you angry. So uh, I hope you uh, win now and then, and that you enjoy it when you do. Du hade rätt. You were right. Du hade rätt. You were right. Again, like uh, it's always nice to be right, I think. Uh, if you weren't sure about something and you look it up and you find out that you were right, but um, I hope this is not part of like an argument where someone is angry at you for being right. So sometimes I think it's more important to agree to disagree to, but I'm sure you you got this. Jag tog med något speciellt today. I brought you something special. Jag tog med något speciellt today. I brought you something special. Maybe if uh, someone you know, like a loved one in the family, has been away traveling and bring you home something special, I know that's something I really appreciate when people do. Budgeten är obegränsad. The budget is unlimited. Budgeten är obegränsad. The budget is unlimited. Well, this is nice in, when you're gonna work on a project or something that you can um, put everything into it that you want. So I hope you get to hear this sometimes. Jag är så stolt över dig. I'm so proud of you. Jag är så stolt över dig. I'm so proud of you. Maybe this is my favorite on the list that someone, to hear that someone is really proud of me. Um, it, it's, it's something extra. You are on a platform at a train station where you're waiting for your train. Suddenly, a message appears on the display. What does the message on the display mean? What does the message on the display mean? The display reads, the next train will not stop. Nästa tåg stannar ej. Your condition is not getting better and you decide to go to the nearby clinic. You receive a medical report. What is the diagnosis? You receive a medical report. What is the diagnosis?
the diagnosis is food poisoning caused by contaminated food. Matförgiftning orsakat av förorenad mat. You just bought a few items from a local shop online. What information does the website say about the delivery date? What information does the website say about the delivery date? The website says that Delivery dates differ depending on the delivery method, but all dates should be calculated from the next working day. Leveransdatum varierar beroende på leveranssätt, men alla datum beräknas från nästa arbetsdag. The day after ordering an item online, you receive an email notification. How can you track your package? How can you track your package? The email says that you can track your package on this website by logging into your account, and after logging in, click on your order history and enter the order number found in this email. Du kan spåra ditt paket på denna hemsida genom att logga in på ditt konto. När du har loggat in, klicka på din orderhistorik och ange det ordernumret som finns i detta mail. When learning a new language, we sometimes have a hard time with things like procrastination, discouragement, or failure. But don't panic. With a good strategy, you'll be able to overcome these difficulties. Are you ready to discover the four habits of successful learners? Number one, optimize your time. When learning a language, it's important to dedicate time to your studies regularly, even if sometimes it's difficult. You're busy with school, work, family, or friends but you can spread out your learning throughout the day. Study whenever you have small gaps of time in your busy schedule. This can be when you're on the metro, on your lunch break, or while you're exercising. Our podcast learning format fits perfectly into your tight schedule. Number two, consistency with your chosen method. There are a lot of options when it comes to courses and learning materials. Switching from one method to another can confuse you and disrupt your progress. 
focusing on one learning method will make a difference. Our method has been created and optimized by real teachers, so you can stick to it with confidence. Number three, use your language background. Many languages share some commonalities. You can find words that look or sound similar, or even share the same grammar structure. A little bit of language background will give you an edge while learning. Number four, study continuously. People are excited when they start learning a new language. The enthusiasm usually lasts until the first roadblock. This can lead to discouragement and procrastination. But don't burn yourself out. Learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't try to learn it all at once. Break things down into more digestible chunks. Learning step-by-step step might feel slow, but it's an efficient way to learn a language. With patience, motivation, and good resources, you'll master the language. Do you want to crush your language learning goals and overcome setbacks on the road to mastering a new language? In this video, you'll discover why learning goals are so vital to learning a new language and overcoming the inevitable setbacks you'll encounter on your way to mastering the language. Here are some useful strategies you can use to crush your goals. First, switch to strategic goals rather than general internal motivation. People are motivated to learn a second language for any number of reasons, including personal enrichment, better career opportunities, or even meeting new people. However, unlike simpler goals, which may only take a week or two to complete, learning a new language takes time and there will be occasional setbacks and failures. So to reach your overall objective of mastering a new language, you need to learn how to motivate yourself and stay focused on the bigger picture. To do so, it is vital to set specific strategic goals with an action plan. Second, reasons learning goals are vital to success. Learning an entire language well enough to carry on full conversations with native speakers is certainly a goal. But with this as your primary objective, there's a long period of time between the time the goal is set and when it can be realistically attained. The problem is that a failure to achieve an objective creates stress that can build until you either reach the learning goal or quit. The solution is to set more realistic strategic learning objectives that are easier to attain but still keep you on track to learning. Here are some examples of strategic learning objectives that you might set on your way to mastering a new language. Study for 10 minutes every day. Complete one lesson or chapter each week. Learn 20 new words each week. Or even learn one new word each day. The key here is that your learning goals and objectives need to be very concise, attainable, and relevant to your overall objective. As long as you can see progress towards your learning goal, your stress levels will be lower and you're far more likely to succeed. Next, to learn a new language or virtually any new skill, you'll need to make adjustments to your routine. Simply telling yourself that you want to be able to speak fluently probably won't force you to alter your daily or weekly routines. But when your strategic goals include learning a new word each day or a lesson every week, you're forced to alter your schedule to reach the goal or risk certain failure. Although altering your schedule may cause some minor degree of stress at first, the added motivation you get from achieving goals quickly eliminates any initial discomfort. And the more strategic goals you complete each day or week, the faster you can achieve your larger goal of mastering the language. The key to achieving goals includes learning how to deal with the inevitable setbacks and failures. The great part about setting smaller, attainable, strategic learning goals is that you can occasionally miss your objective, but quickly make up for it. So if you can't finish a lesson one week, it's entirely possible to either learn the lesson the following week or even do two lessons to make up for the initial failure. The point is that failing to achieve smaller strategic learning goals won't kill your motivation or derail your overall objectives. There are many ways to crush your language learning goals using our program. First, check out our custom learning paths, which are based on your specific goals. Learning paths are designed to help you reach your specific learning objectives by providing you with step-by-step -step strategic goals. So imagine you're about to travel and just wanted to learn enough essential language to navigate any potential emergency situations you might encounter. Our language learning program has created a custom learning path for your goal that includes just 10 lessons or strategic learning objectives. Once you complete the 10 lessons, your larger overall learning goal is complete. Learning paths are one of the most powerful features at our website and help you quickly and efficiently achieve larger learning goals and objectives. For Premium and Premium Plus members, our website offers more than 20 advanced learning tools to make it easier than ever to reach and achieve your goals. These include teacher feedback and comments for every lesson, 
full lesson transcripts and review tracks, voice recording tools to perfect your pronunciation, lesson review quizzes, and much more. Our language learning program makes it easier and more convenient to achieve your smaller strategic goals so you can quickly reach your larger overall objectives in less time and with less stress. Without setting realistic and attainable learning objectives and goals, your larger dream of mastering a new language might never be realized. Specifically, strategic objectives help to reduce stress, adjust your daily routine, and make it far easier to deal with the inevitable setbacks on your way to mastering a language. We've made it simple and easy for you to set and attain your strategic goals so you can successfully reach the larger goal of mastering your target language. Okay. Today's topic is how to double your speaking time in your target language. Today, you're going to learn one, why it's hard for many learners to make progress with their speaking skills, and two, how you can double your speaking time. If you've always wanted to speak more of your target language, then this episode is for you. How to double your speaking time in your target language. Okay, let's get into part one. Why is real speaking progress so hard to make? Let's say you've studied the language for a few months, and now you finally have a chance to practice speaking. Maybe you have a tutor or a native speaker friend who is willing to practice with you. You start talking and your friend helps you improve bits and pieces of your speaking, like pronunciation and grammar. And maybe you can talk about your day and common topics. But without proper preparation on both sides, the person learning and the person teaching, that's it. You're limited to what you can talk about. You don't know enough of the language to keep going, and they aren't prepared to help you speak more of the language. So if you try to have an open-ended conversation, you'll fall flat at some point. You'll run out of things to say and talk about. You'll run out of words and topics. And this is true outside of language learning. It's easy for conversations to die when you run out of things to talk about. A freestyle approach to conversation is nice for advanced learners or people who do serious preparation, but it's not so great for beginners. This is one reason it's hard to make real progress with speaking. You run out of things to say. But there is a way to double your speaking time, even if you're an absolute beginner, even if you're low on words and grammar. And that's by adding structure that you'll find in our lessons. Let's get into that. Part two how you can double your speaking time with our audio and video lessons. Let's say you're having a practice conversation with that same friend, except this time, both of you have a list of topics to follow. Then your conversations won't die out as quickly. The point is, if you have a structure to follow, like a lesson, there's always something for you to fall back on. And if you're already using our audio and video lessons, you get just that. So here's how you can use our lessons to double your speaking time. One, make sure to listen to and review your current audio or video lessons. Why? Each lesson conversation is based on a certain topic, like talking about the weather, talking about family, ordering food, and so on. So by simply taking a lesson, you learn a conversation around a certain topic. Lessons will give you a lot of topics to talk about, along with the relevant grammar and vocabulary, which many beginners might not have. Think about it. If you wanted to talk about a vacation, you'd need to know words like vacation, cruise, and holiday in your target language. You'd also need the right grammar points to help you express ideas. Our audio and video lessons will provide you with all of these, so listen to the lessons and prepare ahead of time. Two, use the dialogue presented in the lesson. In other words, you can memorize the lines from the lesson dialogue. You're already learning conversations in the lesson, so you may as well use them for yourself. And doing this will help prepare you for future conversations. Think about it. We often use lines like, where are you from? What's your name? My name is, how was your weekend? I went out last weekend. Once you memorize these expressions, you can and will use them over and over. As an example, imagine you do a few lessons about the weather you'll master a few conversations about it. The next time that topic pops up in real life, you'll be able to talk about it. And three, each lesson comes with cultural insights. What does that mean for you? It gives you more things to talk about with a native speaker. So if you bring up a cultural point in a conversation with a native speaker, you'll likely get a good reaction and extend the conversation because you're talking about what they know best, their culture. So today you learned one, 
Why it's hard for many learners to make progress with their speaking skills? It's because we tend to run out of things to say. And two, how you can double your speaking time. Accomplish this by taking our lessons, memorizing the dialogues, and using the cultural insights. Today, traditional classrooms are no longer the only or even best place to learn a new language. More and more people are finding that they can easily learn a language just about anywhere they have a few minutes of spare time, including their daily commute to work. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the average American spends over 50 minutes a day commuting to and from work, or over 300 hours a year. But rather than simply sitting in traffic and wasting the time, you can instead use your daily commute to literally learn a new language in just a few short months. Our language learning program has specialized learning tools that you can use on your commute to and from the office to master a language in your spare time. What are some reasons traditional classroom settings just aren't the best option for most people in today's fast-paced world? Difficulty getting to and from class. Learning on someone else's schedule. Very expensive and may cost thousands of dollars to complete. Can take years to finally complete classes and learn the language. The simple truth is the traditional classroom instruction is simply not a viable option for most people in today's very fast-paced, time-starved world. Now, let's examine how you can learn a language faster, more easily, and at far less expense than traditional classes, all during your commute to work and back home again. Three reasons your daily commute can help you master a language in the next year. On average, Americans spend more than 300 hours per year commuting. During the commute to and from work, over six hours a week is completely wasted. The time isn't used to help you reach any goals or objectives. But thanks to online language learning platforms with audiobooks and other resources that you can access during your commute, you can easily transform wasted time into progress toward learning a new language. With over 300 hours available annually, your daily commute could provide you with enough time to gain significant skills in a new language each and every year. Increase your earning potential while commuting to work. How would you like to transform all those spare commuting hours each week into more money for a new car, house, or even a dream vacation? According to research, someone making $30,000 per year can boost their annual income by $600 or more per year by learning a second language. Over the course of a lifetime, that's a significant amount. How? From work-at-home translation jobs to working overseas, there are many ways to leverage your second language into more money in your bank account. So instead of wasting your precious time, you can make your commute more productive and eventually profitable. The more languages you learn, the higher your income potential. Repetition is key to mastering a new language. Not sure if it's practical to learn another language while commuting to and from work each day? Well, not only is it possible, learning in your car on the way to and from work each day can actually help you learn and master any language quickly. The simple truth is that repetition is absolutely vital to truly internalizing and mastering any language. So, if you listen to audiobooks or even audio lessons on your commute to work and then repeat the same lesson on your commute home, the information is more likely to be locked in to your long-term memory. Our language learning program has been helping people learn and master language in the comfort of their home, during their daily commute, or any place they have a few spare minutes of time. Here are five features of our program that make it easy to learn a new language while commuting to and from work. First, the largest collection of audio lessons on the planet by native speaker instructors. Every single week, native speaker instructors create new audio lessons. All lessons are short, to the point, and guaranteed to improve your mastery of a language. Second, the word of the day. Simply exposing yourself to new information and vocabulary terms helps increase your fluency and mastery of your target language. So every single day, check out the word of the day and memorize it during your commute. It's a quick and easy way to boost your vocabulary every day. Third, daily dose mini lessons. Have a short commute to work, but still want to make progress towards learning more than just vocabulary? Not a problem. Our daily dose mini lessons are one minute or less and are designed to improve your grammar, conversations, and pronunciation. Fourth, all content is available on a convenient mobile app. You don't need a PC or tablet to learn during your daily commute. Instead, all of our lessons, tools, and resources are available 24-7 via our mobile app. 
That means you can access all of our audio lessons and other tools during your commute to work or anytime you have a few spare minutes. Fifth, audiobooks and other supplemental resources. In addition to the world's largest online collection of HD audio lessons, our language learning program has audiobooks to enhance your understanding and make it more convenient than ever to learn a language during your commute. The average commute time of most Americans is over 300 hours each year, and it's the perfect opportunity to learn and master a new language. Use the dead time during your daily commute to learn a new language and potentially boost your lifetime earnings. Whatever your motivation, our language learning program has the tools and resources necessary to help you learn a new language each year during your commute to and from work. Immersion is often hailed as the most efficient and effective way to learn a foreign language. In many ways, it's true. With all the language learning methods out there, nothing else comes close to having to think and interact with your environment in the language you're learning. Unfortunately though, most language learners wrongly assume that the only way to experience language immersion is to pack up and move to a foreign country. But not everyone can afford to spend a summer abroad just to learn a foreign language. Luckily, there are other ways to immerse yourself. These methods are less obvious, but they are effective. In this video, we'll take a look at five steps you can take for the ultimate language immersion experience at home. Number one. Transform your digital world into your target language. Technology is an indispensable part of modern life. We interact with phones, computers, tablets, and other electronic devices throughout the day. Why not take these interactions and use them to practice your target language? Most devices give you the option of switching the language of the operating system. Switching your phone or laptop interface to your target language won't make you fluent but it will help you engage with the language in a very practical way, multiple times every day. Another way to transform your digital life is to check which sites you use on a daily basis and use them in your target language also. A great example of this is switching your version of Google. Using Google in your target language will allow you to search for things in that language and you're more likely to get results in that language as well. So, if you're looking for a popular band, a show, or food, something that's usually written in your target language, it will actually be easier to find information about it if you switch your version of Google. Of course, you can also change popular social networks like Facebook or Twitter. You can even go to news sites for your fill of global news. Do you like podcasts? Try listening to a couple popular podcasts in your target language. Number two, write out a speech or conversation in your target language. A surefire way to increase your ability in a foreign language is to write out a mock conversation or speech in that language. Pretend you have to give a speech on one of your favorite topics. It could be anything from sports, hobbies, or even your favorite movie genre. Now, take some time to write out your fictitious speech. Inevitably, you will hit some roadblocks. But when you get stuck, research the words or grammar points you don't know. This is a highly effective and practical way to increase your vocabulary, and it'll help you practice thinking in a different language. Writing a long, connected train of thoughts exposes the gaps and weaknesses in your language studying. Once you know what these are, you're free to practice them and use them to continue on with your speech. This is also a great way to learn new words in the context of your entire speech. Context is king when you're learning a language. Learning words in the context of other words and sentences helps you surmise what new words mean. It also helps you get comfortable with how these words are practically used. Not to mention, context helps you to remember and recall new information more easily. Number three, practice with native speakers. There are a lot of great learning resources out there for anyone learning a new language. However, nothing quite comes close to practicing the language with a real person. If you live in or around a large metropolitan area, there's a chance that there are some native speakers nearby. Check and see if your area has any local language exchanges or language speaking groups. You're likely to find a native speaker there. If you can't make a connection locally, you can search online. Just as there are language exchanges in the real world, there are also online ones, most of which are free. Number four, connect with other language learners. Native speakers aren't the only people who can aid you on your language learning journey. Practicing with other learners is also helpful. Don't worry if you practice with someone who has a higher or lower level in the language than you. If you're the more advanced learner, you can learn a lot by teaching someone else. 
As you help someone else understand difficult words or grammatical concepts, you'll find that you start to better understand them yourself. If your learning partner has a higher level, they can be the one to help you overcome the hurdles you encounter as a beginner. After all, what better way to learn than from someone who, as a language learner, has been in your shoes? Number five, reward yourself in your target language. At the end of a busy day, we all love a little relaxation and me time. One of the most enjoyable and effective ways to develop your language skills is to kick back and enjoy the language while doing leisure activities. Whether it's listening to music, watching a movie or TV show, reading a book, or even enjoying a good online video binge, even spending just an extra 30 minutes a day doing something you love in your target language can yield some serious long-term results. If you're a beginner, start with more basic content. You might have to start out listening to simple songs or even watching children's shows. After a while though, you'll be able to dive into the meatier stuff and more engaging stuff as your proficiency increases. Learning a foreign language doesn't mean you have to spend your days straining over grammar rules or textbooks. Any way that you can take your learning off the page and make it more enjoyable will help you learn faster. Immersion is a powerful way to learn a foreign language. And now more than ever, the immersion experience isn't limited to just world travelers. With a little creativity and the right resources, you can experience the language without ever having to leave your hometown. How to improve your language and speak more through preparation. Do you think it's possible to speak more of your target language by preparing lines ahead of time? Today, you're going to learn, one, why you should prepare for conversations ahead of time, and two, how you can prepare for conversations in your target language. If you've always wanted to speak more of your target language, but didn't know how, this tactic will give you more to talk about. How to improve your language and speak more through preparation. Okay, let's get into part one. Why you should prepare for conversations ahead of time. If you're a beginner, you can probably relate to this. When it comes to speaking, you tend to run out of things to say. And that's because you don't know enough of the language to express yourself. And that's where preparation comes in. You may think that the conversations we have in our daily lives are spontaneous, that you can't prepare for them. You're right to an extent. But imagine meeting someone for the first time. Both of you will go through some common questions and phrases like, what's your name? My name is, where are you from? And how long have you been studying the language? As a language learner, you'll have these kinds of conversations with almost every native you meet, guaranteed. They'll always ask you about how long and how you've been learning. And even with your friends, some conversations start the same way. For example, you say things like, hey, how are you? How are things? How was your weekend? My weekend was good, and you? Let's say you went to a restaurant this weekend, and now you wanna talk about it. Well, that allows you to prepare and learn some phrases like, I went to a restaurant. The restaurant had delicious food. The point is, some questions and phrases come up often in conversations, so it makes total sense to master them ahead of time. And you can always plan ahead and prepare for things you wanna talk about. When it comes time to speak, you know what to say, how to respond, and you don't run out of talking points as quickly. So how do you prepare? Let's jump into part two. The first thing you can do to prepare is check out our 25 questions you need to know lesson series. This series is specifically designed to help you with the first time conversations you'll have with native speakers. You'll learn the 25 most common questions and answers used in conversations. Just listen to the lessons, repeat out loud, then put what you learn to use. These will serve as talking points so you can keep your conversations going. Number two, print out the curriculum for this lesson series so you can review all of the lessons at once. The curriculum gives you the lines and vocabulary used in all lessons up front, so you can use this to review key questions and responses. This will allow you to control conversations and ask questions instead of just having the native speaker ask you all the questions. In other words, you'll sound like a fluid, confident, and experienced speaker. Number three, check out our printable conversation cheat sheets. This is another free resource that gives you lines and words for all kinds of topics. For example, talking about hobbies, your family, and much more. Number four, ask yourself, what do you wanna talk about? Come up with some topics, and for each topic, write out potential questions and phrases that would come up in a conversation. For example, if you wanna talk about restaurants, you can have lines like, 
my favorite restaurant is, my favorite food is, what's your favorite restaurant? And then run these lines through a translation app. It won't be perfect, but it'll give you lines to use that you can correct later. Number five, look for lessons that are related to your topics with our lesson library. On our site, we have hundreds of lessons that teach you conversations. So if you're looking for lessons related to restaurants and food, you'll get all kinds of conversations that you can use for yourself. And number six, if you're a Premium Plus user, get in touch with your teacher via My Teacher and try a conversation with them. They'll help you every step of the way, correct your writing, and give you the lines to use in a conversation. That way, you can prepare ahead of time, and when it comes time to speak, you'll know what to say. All right, everyone, here's a challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30-second to one-minute video or audio clip. Tell us, what's your language learning goal for 2020? If you do, you'll win a one-month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form. Attach the audio or video file and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode. So a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time we'll talk about how to start conversations, talking points for language learners. Most people don't like to hear this, but consistent hard work is one of the biggest factors in your language learning success. The course or method you choose makes a difference too, but at the end of the day, you ride or die by the work you put in. The quantity of time spent studying language doesn't necessarily determine the quality of your study. Spending three hours a day watching movies doesn't help you learn much if you're not actively engaging with the language. In this video, we'll talk about three ways to actively engage your mind while studying a new language. Number one, think of your brain as a muscle. You're probably familiar with the phrase, feel the burn, or maybe no pain, no gain. If you've been to your local gym recently, there's a chance you might have heard one of these phrases or seen them plastered on a wall. There's an idea in the world of sports and workouts that the discomfort you feel when running, pumping iron, or doing some other physical activity is what brings results. During a healthy workout, the muscles of the body are affected at a microscopic level. The discomfort you feel is your muscles being pushed to their limit. It's the limit pushing that strengthens your muscles so that over time, your performance increases. In the context of language learning, it's helpful to think of your brain as a muscle. Just as we need to push our physical limits when exercising, we also need to push our mental limits when learning a foreign language. Have you ever studied or practiced your target language in a way that left you tired or even exhausted? If so, you've experienced what it's like to push your brain out of its linguistic comfort zone. Number two, practice active listening. One of the easiest ways to push your language skills is to practice active listening. Active listening is when you listen to someone speaking your target language and you do your best to understand what you hear. The best way to accomplish this is by using audio that you can't completely understand on the first listen. Preferably, you want to use audio that has subtitles or transcripts for you to double check your understanding after you listen to it. You can use movies, YouTube clips, or even our language program, which has very useful transcripts for each lesson. During a practice session, you should listen to the audio several times. The first time around, it's okay if little to no words stick out to you. Simply make a mental note of any words or sounds you recognize. The second time you listen, you're likely to recognize a little more than you did the previous time. Expect similar results with your third or even fourth time listening. After you've hit the ceiling of words you can decipher, go ahead and look at the language subtitles or transcripts. Listen to the audio again, reading along with the text. Odds are that you will see words in the text you know, but didn't hear correctly. You're also likely to encounter words that are new to you completely. As you play back the audio and read along, try to guess what these words mean from the context of the words around them. After you've read along a couple times, feel free to look up the remaining unfamiliar words in a dictionary or translator app. This active listening exercise routine is a great way to increase your listening and comprehension skills while picking up some new vocabulary along the way. It also allows you to learn new words in context, which itself is a powerful method to help you retain what you study. Number three, practicing with native speakers. 
Practicing with native speakers is the epitome of pushing your language skills. Using what you know to communicate in real time is where the rubber really meets the road. Try to connect with a native speaker on a weekly basis. Regularity is what makes the difference when you're learning a foreign language. If you live in a large metropolitan area, then there's a significant chance that there are some local native speakers nearby. Try hitting up a local language exchange or meetup group to make the necessary connections. If you're unable to find a practice partner locally, then you can take your search online. There are a number of sites out there that help you find and connect with other language learners from around the world. There are tons of language learners around the world who have learned or are learning a second language. You're likely to find someone who knows your target language and is looking to improve their own language skills as well. Learning a new language isn't always easy, but it's the discomfort that comes with pushing your ability in the language that produces results in your studies. Don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. The further away you get from your native language, the closer you'll be to attaining fluency. Also remember that language learning is in every way a lot like an adventure. There will be fun times and times when it feels like you're swimming up the proverbial stream. It's by keeping your head up long enough through these ups and downs that you will experience the priceless satisfaction that comes from learning a foreign language. Just keep moving forward. Let's be honest, it's difficult to learn a new language. If you're new to a language, it's going to take consistent and concentrated effort to start using the language fluently. However, this fact shouldn't discourage you. While learning a new language is hard, it's far from impossible. In this video, we'll outline five tips you can use to jumpstart your language learning. Follow these pointers to learn your target language in a way that is efficient and effective. Number one, limit your native language use when practicing. The idea here is that when you practice with native speakers, you do your best to refrain from using your native language. This is generally harder the less you know, but if you can manage to stick to this rule, you'll reap some huge rewards. If you commit to a no native language practice session, it's not going to be easy. Most likely there will be some frustrating, if not painstakingly difficult moments where you either have trouble understanding the person you're talking to or you can't say what you wanna say. It's precisely in these moments that your language learning muscles are built up to capacity. The process really isn't all that different from working out in the gym. Just replace the physical burn of lifting weights for the mental burn of thinking in a new language. In the end, if there's no pain, there's no gain. Obviously, this no native language rule doesn't have to be written in stone. There are times when it's more beneficial to break out of the target language box and have something explained to you in your native language. However, this should definitely be the exception rather than the standard. Number two, have set times to practice speaking throughout the week. Now that we've discussed a good way to practice speaking, let's delve a bit into when to speak. One of the best commitments you can keep while learning a new language is to set aside specific times to practice speaking the language on a weekly basis. Ideally, these speaking sessions are on set days at specific times and form part of your weekly routine. If you don't make it a point to set aside specific practice times, you run the risk of your language practice falling through the cracks of your busy schedule. I recommend writing down your practice times and hanging it somewhere you can always see it. You could also input the times into your phone and set an alarm. The point is to remind yourself of your commitment every day so that it doesn't fall by the wayside. Number three, get picky about vocabulary. Whether you practice with a podcast, a friend at a coffee shop, or a teacher, you're going to run into a flood of new and unfamiliar vocabulary. Despite your best efforts, it's unlikely that you'll be able to pin down every new word or phrase you hear and study it later. Thus, you should pick and choose which new words you focus on. The defining quality of each new word you learn should be its practicality. The more useful a word or phrase is to you in a conversation, the more important it is that you learn it. Don't feel like you have to cram the entirety of your target language into one week of study. Take it one step at a time. A few practical words here, some more there. Before you know it, you'll see your vocabulary improve. Number four, write and practice short monologues. This tip can be a lot of fun. Begin by selecting a topic you enjoy discussing. Then simply write out a short monologue or speech on the subject in your target language. The first thing you'll notice while doing this will likely be the holes in your grammar and vocabulary. But when you try to write out your thoughts in a foreign language, you might inevitably hit roadblocks. 
You might not be able to think of a word or know how to formulate a specific idea or opinion yet. This can be great because these holes are the exact areas where you should focus your studies. You can bring up these problem areas in your next lesson or browse through your favorite language course or textbook in order to find the answer. The constant process of finding these language holes and filling them is what keeps you moving along the path to fluency. Once you finish your short text, it's a great idea to practice reciting it or even memorizing it. The memorization will help you internalize the new grammar and vocabulary you've learned. Reciting it will get your tongue and mouth used to the sounds. Number five, keep an up-to-date list on what you want to learn. Throughout your studies, you should always have a sort of language shopping list. As you practice and study, you will most likely come across things you'd like to be able to say, but don't know how to yet, especially if you follow our previous tip. Write this wish list down. It's one thing to learn the vocabulary you pick up via a course or podcast, both of which are great. It's a bit different when your vocabulary gets personal. Learn the words that matter to you, either because they're practical or because you simply find them interesting. The more relevant the vocabulary, the more likely you are to retain it. Some people might tell you it's impossible to learn a new language for whatever reason, but it's important to remember that the way you study and engage with a language greatly affects how quickly or effectively you learn it. Most people don't like to hear this, but consistent hard work is one of the biggest factors in your language learning success. The course or method you choose makes a difference too, but at the end of the day, you ride or die by the work you put in. The quantity of time spent studying language doesn't necessarily determine the quality of your study. Spending three hours a day watching movies doesn't help you learn much if you're not actively engaging with the language. In this video, we'll talk about three ways to actively engage your mind while studying a new language. Number one, think of your brain as a muscle. You're probably familiar with the phrase, feel the burn, or maybe no pain, no gain. If you've been to your local gym recently, there's a chance you might have heard one of these phrases or seen them plastered on a wall. There's an idea in the world of sports and workouts that the discomfort you feel when running, pumping iron, or doing some other physical activity is what brings results. During a healthy workout, the muscles of the body are affected at a microscopic level. The discomfort you feel is your muscles being pushed to their limit. It's the limit pushing that strengthens your muscles so that over time, your performance increases. In the context of language learning, it's helpful to think of your brain as a muscle. Just as we need to push our physical limits when exercising, we also need to push our mental limits when learning a foreign language. Have you ever studied or practiced your target language in a way that left you tired or even exhausted? If so, you've experienced what it's like to push your brain out of its linguistic comfort zone. Number two. Practice active listening. One of the easiest ways to push your language skills is to practice active listening. Active listening is when you listen to someone speaking your target language and you do your best to understand what you hear. The best way to accomplish this is by using audio that you can't completely understand on the first listen. Preferably, you want to use audio that has subtitles or transcripts for you to double check your understanding after you listen to it. You can use movies, YouTube clips, or even our language program, which has very useful transcripts for each lesson. During a practice session, you should listen to the audio several times. The first time around, it's okay if little to no words stick out to you. Simply make a mental note of any words or sounds you recognize. The second time you listen, you're likely to recognize a little more than you did the previous time. Expect similar results with your third or even fourth time listening. After you've hit the ceiling of words you can decipher, go ahead and look at the language subtitles or transcripts. Listen to the audio again, reading along with the text. Odds are that you will see words in the text you know, but didn't hear correctly. You're also likely to encounter words that are new to you completely. As you play back the audio and read along, try to guess what these words mean from the context of the words around them. After you've read along a couple times, feel free to look up the remaining unfamiliar words in a dictionary or translator app. This active listening exercise routine is a great way to increase your listening and comprehension skills while picking up some new vocabulary along the way. It also allows you to learn new words in context, which itself is a powerful method to help you retain what you study. Number three, practicing with native speakers. Practicing with native speakers is the epitome of pushing your language skills. Using what you know to communicate in real time is where the rubber really meets the road. 
try to connect with a native speaker on a weekly basis. Regularity is what makes the difference when you're learning a foreign language. If you live in a large metropolitan area, then there's a significant chance that there are some local native speakers nearby. Try hitting up a local language exchange or meetup group to make the necessary connections. If you're unable to find a practice partner locally, then you can take your search online. There are a number of sites out there that help you find and connect with other language learners from around the world. There are tons of language learners around the world who have learned or are learning a second language. You're likely to find someone who knows your target language and is looking to improve their own language skills as well. Learning a new language isn't always easy, but it's the discomfort that comes with pushing your ability in the language that produces results in your studies. Don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. The further away you get from your native language, the closer you'll be to attaining fluency. Also remember that language learning is in every way a lot like an adventure. There will be fun times and times when it feels like you're swimming up the proverbial stream. It's by keeping your head up long enough through these ups and downs that you will experience the priceless satisfaction that comes from learning a foreign language. Just keep moving forward. Let's be honest, it's difficult to learn a new language. If you're new to a language, it's going to take consistent and concentrated effort to start using the language fluently. However, this fact shouldn't discourage you. While learning a new language is hard, it's far from impossible. In this video, we'll outline five tips you can use to jumpstart your language learning. Follow these pointers to learn your target language in a way that is efficient and effective. Number one, limit your native language use when practicing. The idea here is that when you practice with native speakers, you do your best to refrain from using your native language. This is generally harder the less you know, but if you can manage to stick to this rule, you'll reap some huge rewards. If you commit to a no native language practice session, it's not going to be easy. Most likely there will be some frustrating, if not painstakingly difficult moments where you either have trouble understanding the person you're talking to or you can't say what you want to say. It's precisely in these moments that your language learning muscles are built up to capacity. The process really isn't all that different from working out in the gym. Just replace the physical burn of lifting weights for the mental burn of thinking in a new language. In the end, if there's no pain, there's no gain. Obviously, this no native language rule doesn't have to be written in stone. There are times when it's more beneficial to break out of the target language box and have something explained to you in your native language. However, this should definitely be the exception rather than the standard. Number two, have set times to practice speaking throughout the week. Now that we've discussed a good way to practice speaking, let's delve a bit into when to speak. One of the best commitments you can keep while learning a new language is to set aside specific times to practice speaking the language on a weekly basis. Ideally, these speaking sessions are on set days at specific times and form part of your weekly routine. If you don't make it a point to set aside specific practice times, you run the risk of your language practice falling through the cracks of your busy schedule. I recommend writing down your practice times and hanging it somewhere you can always see it. You could also input the times into your phone and set an alarm. The point is to remind yourself of your commitment every day so that it doesn't fall by the wayside. Number three, get picky about vocabulary. Whether you practice with a podcast, a friend at a coffee shop, or a teacher, you're going to run into a flood of new and unfamiliar vocabulary. Despite your best efforts, it's unlikely that you'll be able to pin down every new word or phrase you hear and study it later. Thus, you should pick and choose which new words you focus on. The defining quality of each new word you learn should be its practicality. The more useful a word or phrase is to you in a conversation, the more important it is that you learn it. Don't feel like you have to cram the entirety of your target language into one week of study. Take it one step at a time. A few practical words here, some more there. Before you know it, you'll see your vocabulary improve. Number four, write and practice short monologues. This tip can be a lot of fun. Begin by selecting a topic you enjoy discussing. Then, simply write out a short monologue or speech on the subject in your target language. The first thing you'll notice while doing this will likely be the holes in your grammar and vocabulary. But when you try to write out your thoughts in a foreign language, you might inevitably hit roadblocks. You might not be able to think of a word or know how to formulate a specific idea or opinion yet. This can be great because these holes are the exact areas where you should focus your studies. 
You can bring up these problem areas in your next lesson or browse through your favorite language course or textbook in order to find the answer. The constant process of finding these language holes and filling them is what keeps you moving along the path to fluency. Once you finish your short text, it's a great idea to practice reciting it or even memorizing it. The memorization will help you internalize the new grammar and vocabulary you've learned. Reciting it will get your tongue and mouth used to the sounds. Number five, keep an up-to-date list on what you want to learn. Throughout your studies, you should always have a sort of language shopping list. As you practice and study, you will most likely come across things you'd like to be able to say, but don't know how to yet, especially if you follow our previous tip. Write this wish list down. It's one thing to learn the vocabulary you pick up via a course or podcast, both of which are great. It's a bit different when your vocabulary gets personal. Learn the words that matter to you, either because they're practical or because you simply find them interesting. The more relevant the vocabulary, the more likely you are to retain it. Some people might tell you it's impossible to learn a new language for whatever reason, but it's important to remember that the way you study and engage with a language greatly affects how quickly or effectively you learn it. Being able to speak freely with native speakers is an amazing ability in itself, but being able to speak freely to a whole new group of people opens you up to possible new relationships. Most people don't realize that spending the time to build relationships in a foreign language can actually help you improve your language skills dramatically. In this video, we look at how making relationships in a foreign language can help you learn the language faster. The benefits of having friends and partners who speak a foreign language. First, it's motivational. One of the greatest struggles for anyone learning a second language is motivation. Nine times out of 10, learners start out their language learning journey with loads of enthusiasm, only to see it gradually wane over time. Try as they may, it's difficult to maintain the spark they once shared with their new language. So why not borrow energy from a different part of your life? When you make relationships with people in your target language, all the excitement of a new relationship carries directly over into your learning. Suddenly, you have a very rewarding reason to improve your skills and keep practicing. As your partner or your friends get involved, you will also have the advantage of a constant source of support and encouragement. Second, it makes language learning practical. Studying vocabulary and grammar is a vital part of language learning, whether you use a podcast, textbook, app, or find yourself in a classroom. However, as great as studying is, a language really only starts to come alive once you start using it in everyday life. There's a huge difference between a scripted conversation in a lesson plan and a real-life conversation with a native speaker. Building relationships with native speakers will give you the chance to talk in your target language often. Furthermore, it will be in a way that feels natural. You'll learn the words in the context, which is hugely important. Third, it's fun. One of the greatest benefits is that it allows you to practice without having it feel like practice. Oftentimes, you'll find yourself so wrapped up in the conversation that you forget you're using a foreign language. This takes a lot of the pressure off and helps you focus on communication over trying to speak absolutely perfectly. You also get to learn about a whole new culture from your partner or friends. So you're not only learning language skills, but also about the cultures that surround your target language. The risks of having friends and partners who speak a foreign language. First, it's easy to miscommunicate. When it comes to relationships, humans can easily misunderstand each other. So it can be hard when building relationships in your target language when you or your partner's lack of ability in each other's respective native tongue can lead to miscommunications that would otherwise be avoidable. Depending on the language you're speaking, a simple mistranslation or mispronounced word can drastically change the meaning of a sentence. As long as you can afford each other some extra patience and the benefit of the doubt, then you should be able to overcome this pitfall. Second, your language skills could suffer if your relationships don't work out. If all your language practice is wrapped up in one person and your relationship with that person doesn't work out, then your language learning could take a big hit. So it's best not to put all your hopes for language growth on one area, relationship or otherwise. You don't want to risk losing motivation, so try to find it in many different areas. An idea for building relationships in a foreign language. Make games out of getting to know one another. Sometimes, opening up in any new friendship or partnership can be hard. Add in the added struggle of a new language and it can feel impossible to share your true feelings with others. 
So instead of trying to take first interactions so seriously and talking about the usual things like the weather or work, try to ask new, interesting questions. Try to figure out what the other person's hobbies are without asking directly, or what kind of job they have. This will give you a chance to stretch your language skills in a new way, and you'll probably get some funny answers out of it too. Being comfortable being silly or making language mistakes is a great way to bond with someone, even if you've just met. Relationships in a foreign language have a lot more benefits to offer than drawbacks. Don't be scared to open up to people and make mistakes. Hey everyone, welcome to The Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning. How to finally learn language in 2020, your New Year's resolution solution. Today, you're going to learn, one, three reasons most goals fail, two, the three rules for successful goal setting, and three, we're going to set you up with your first language goal for 2020. So, if you've failed with your goals or New Year's resolutions before, then this lesson is for you. You'll be able to finally learn your target language, make measurable progress, and reach every goal you set. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the making a phone call cheat sheet. Want to be able to talk on the phone in your target language? Then this conversation cheat sheet will help you do just that. You'll learn all the basic phrases, questions, and answers you'll need when making a phone call. Second, want to know the learning hacks, motivational tips, and success strategies for learning a language in 2020? Then you'll want this exclusive 52-page ebook. Download it now for free before we take it down. Third, words and phrases for the dentist. Learn how to schedule a checkup, talk about a toothache, and much more with this one-minute vocab lesson. Fourth, can you talk about your zodiac sign? If not, then this next one-minute lesson is for you. You'll learn how to say the 12 signs in your target language. Fifth, the 32 words you need for language learning. Noun, verb, adjective, sentence, grammar. Can you say these in your target language? If not, you'll want this quick one-minute lesson. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to finally learn language in 2020, your New Year's resolution solution. So, January is over, but let me ask you a question. Have you set a resolution for this year? If you haven't, it's understandable. Most people end up failing with their resolutions. You set one, you try to do it in January, and by February, there's no progress. Doing it is no longer fun, or you get sidelined by something else. So you quit and put it off until next year, or whenever the guilt of quitting your goals comes back to haunt you. So what's the problem with setting resolutions? Why do we keep failing? First of all, regardless of what most people say about New Year's resolutions, setting goals, whether on January 1st or any other time of the year, is a good thing. You have to know where you're going and what you want to achieve. Otherwise, you'll be floating around aimlessly from one language app to another and have nothing to show for your time spent. But the problem lies with the goals that people set. For example, most people set goals like, I want to master Chinese, or I want to lose weight, or I want to be fluent in Japanese. And based on these kinds of goals, here are three reasons why 90% of New Year's resolutions fail. First, resolutions fail because they are not specific and not measurable. Take a goal like, I want to master Chinese this year. The problem is that's a very vague goal. What do you mean by master? Do you want to speak about the economy? Or do you just want to have everyday conversations? And can you really measure how much progress you need to master the language? The second reason is, they are unrealistic. You might think, but isn't it good to set huge goals and aim for the stars? It's not bad, but if you say, I wanna be fluent by September, is that realistic for you? Are you ready to commit yourself to nothing but language learning, six to eight hours a day, nonstop? The answer is no for most people. The third one is, there's no action plan. The problem is, you'll still fail even with a specific and realistic goal if you don't know when and how you're going to do it. For example, when will you study? How long will you study every day? And how will you study? So now you know why most people fail with their New Year's resolutions. Then how do we set New Year's resolutions and actually succeed? Here are the three rules for successful goal setting. Remember, your goals must be one, specific and measurable, two, realistic, and three, they must have an action plan. Yes, the complete opposite of everything you heard earlier. For example, Let's say you're learning Italian this year. 
Instead of saying, my goal is to learn Italian this year, set a specific, measurable, realistic goal for the month, like speak three minutes of conversation by February 28th. And you can also set a yearly goal, like 30 minutes of conversation, and work towards that. The whole point is, three minutes is measurable. You set a timer, time yourself, and know when you reach it. It's realistic. Instead of saying, I want to learn the whole language, you're just aiming for three minutes for the month and maybe 30 minutes for the year. So ask yourself, do I have time to learn enough of the language to speak for three minutes? That will vary from learner to learner, but three minutes sounds much more realistic than I want to master a language. Finally, you still need an action plan for your goal. And for that, you need to answer these questions. When will you study? How long will you study every day? Where do you plan to study? How will you study? What is your study schedule? This is the most important part because this tells you when and how to study. If you don't answer these questions, you'll have no idea what to do and you'll quit because you have no routine to stick to. So for example, when will you study? I'll study at 9 p.m. on weekdays. How long will you study every day? I'll study for 20 minutes. Where do you plan to study? I'll study at home, in the living room, on my computer. How will you study? I'll listen to one audio lesson a day for five days. What is your study schedule? From Monday to Friday with audio lessons. I'll listen to the lesson, then go through the lesson notes for 20 minutes each day. Here are a few more things you can do to improve your chances of success. Reward yourself after hitting a goal. Studies have shown that giving yourself a reward after reaching a goal is crucial to creating lasting habits and continuing to conquer more goals. Write down your small measurable goal and put it somewhere you'll see it often. Now that you know why New Year's resolutions fail and you know what to do differently, it's time to set your goal. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. See you next time, bye. Hey everyone, welcome to the Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is, are you improving? How to assess your language skills. Have you ever wondered, am I actually getting better with my target language? If you want to know how to check and see if you've improved or not, then keep watching. Today you'll learn why assessment can mean the difference between fluency and failure, how to assess your language skills even if you're learning on your own, and much more. Are you improving? How to assess your language skills. So, have you ever wondered, am I actually improving with my target language? Feeling like you're not improving can hurt your motivation. On the flip side, if you notice yourself understanding more of the language than before, you can feel good, and that can fuel your motivation to keep going. But it's not easy to spot your improvement. It's tricky with language. It's not like going to the gym, where you can see your muscles in the mirror. This is where assessment comes in. What's assessment? The easiest example of assessment is a test. If you go to a language class, you'll get a test on the first day. The goal of the assessment test is to understand where your language level is and any test after that is a way to see how much you've improved. This is ongoing assessment. So assessment is checking where you are now and how far you've come with your language learning. Assessment lets you see where you've improved and helps you find what you need to work on. If you're serious about learning a language, it's one of the best things you can do to stay on track, stay motivated, correct your mistakes, and reach fluency. But assessing yourself is also hard if you're learning on your own. So what can you do? Here's how you can assess your language skills, whether you're learning with our program or not. Number one, if you're a Premium Plus user, retake the assessment test. Technically, you can only take this once, but if you get in touch with our support team, we'll give you the link. If you're using any other resource, find a way to test yourself. Look for practice tests, apply for a proficiency test, take online quizzes, anything that forces you to test your language skills. Number two, revisit old lessons. An easier way to self-assess your language level is to revisit old lessons. You can do this with any program you're learning with. If you've truly made progress, then you should be able to understand the lesson dialogues with no problem. If not, then you know that you need to review them some more. Number three, try harder lessons. Also something you can do with any language resource. If you're using our program, try lessons from a higher level. 
If you're a lower intermediate, try upper intermediate lessons. If you don't understand anything, that's fine. But if you do, then that's a good sign that you've improved and are ready for harder lessons. Number four, for reading, check out our extensive reading books. These are available for all levels, from absolute beginner to advanced. You can reread old ones or try harder ones to see where your current level is. You'll find these books in our lesson library. This will help you assess your reading and comprehension skills. Number five, for speaking, use our voice recording tool. If you can easily repeat the lines from the conversation, that's a good sign. Or if you're using another program, try to shadow the provided conversations. If you can do it without a problem, then you've made progress and are ready to go to the next level. Number six, for writing, try and copy out our lesson dialogue by hand. The point here is to see if you can write smoothly or not as a way of assessing your writing. You can also do this with any textbook. You can also take a picture of your writing and send it to your Premium Plus teacher for feedback. Number seven, use our Premium Plus assignments. If you're a Premium Plus member, you can ask your teacher to send you weekly assignments based on your needs, whether for reading, writing, speaking, or listening. And they'll provide you feedback so you can see where you are with each skill. So to recap, one, take our assessment test, two, revisit old lessons, three, try harder lessons, four, use our extensive reading books for reading, five, use our voice recording tool, six, write out dialogues by hand, and seven, take advantage of our assignments. Remember, the point of assessment is not to pass or fail, but to see where you've improved and where you need to work. If you're trying to learn a new language, you'll sometimes have to contend with a whole new alphabet, complex grammar, and difficult pronunciation. Many new learners start out strong, but peter out after a short time. But that doesn't have to be your story. Don't let the harsh reputation of some languages scare you away. Yes, it's not easy, but it probably isn't as hard as you think either. In this video, we'll give you four ways to improve the way you study while learning a new language. Follow these and it will be hard not to see improvement in your language ability. Number one, develop a good accent. When first trying to learn a new language, the words might overwhelm you. Some words might be extremely long or complicated in ways you aren't used to. As a result, the new language can sometimes sound more like noise than an actual language. This could be because you don't yet have a good grasp of pronunciation in that language. So focus on this weak point by learning and practicing how to correctly pronounce each individual sound in the language. Start with ones most similar to your native language, and then move on to the more difficult ones. Then start practicing with full words, phrases, and sentences. Work your way up to listening to recorded audio of native speakers and try your best to mimic their flow of speech. While this method probably won't make your accent perfect, it will help you improve greatly. Even more importantly, you'll be able to hear the language differently and continue to improve. When you intuitively know how to correctly pronounce a sound, it's a lot easier to recognize that sound when it is spoken or read. Knowing these new sounds gives your brain some context for what it hears when you're using the language. Our language learning program is a great tool for working on your pronunciation. It lets you play back the words from a lesson in isolation. You can also play audio at a slower speed. This is perfect for pinpointing the nuances of the language and developing your own accent, as well as your ear. Number two, break down the writing system. Every language has its own unique set of rules and challenges when it comes to writing. Your best bet is to focus on one point at a time. Trying to learn the entire system at once can be overwhelming. Work with a section of the writing system until you become fairly comfortable with it. The point of going slowly and doing one piece at a time is to ensure that you have a firm foundation. If you rush through this stage, you might miss essential details, and this may negatively affect your learning in the future. Number three, learn grammar in context. This tip is applicable no matter what language you're learning. Once you move past the basic vocabulary in the language, Try to pick up the patterns of the grammar by learning the rules in the context of phrases or sentences. Example sentences found in the lesson notes of each of our lessons are extremely helpful for this. After each lesson, you can look at the examples to get a feel for how a particular aspect of the grammar worked. Then, you can practice making your own similar phrases using the same rule. Slowly but surely, as you work through each episode, you'll take greater ownership of the language. This approach is a lot more effective than memorizing tables or rules. If you can use the grammar and vocabulary you just learned, 
you're much more likely to internalize it and thus remember it the next time you want to say something in your target language. Number four, get feedback from native speakers. Receiving correct and accurate feedback from native speakers is vital to improving your skills in the language. Whether you're reading or writing, you need to find out what your mistakes are so that you can correct them. Some people are willing and able to pay a private tutor or take a formal class in order to help them progress. These things will certainly help, but they aren't the only options. If you live near a major city, there's a chance that there are some native speakers in your area. Keep your eyes and ears open, because you might be surprised where you can find them. You can look for a nearby meetup group or a language exchange. You're likely to find speakers there as well. If these options don't work out, you can take your search online. There are several free language exchanges where you can chat via video or audio with other language learners. Look for a native speaker learning your own native language so that you can practice together and correct each other's mistakes. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and make mistakes. It's all part of the process. As long as you're getting good feedback when you use the language, your skills will improve. Hopefully this video took some of the fear and mystery out of learning a new language. Remember that the most important tip is to enjoy the language for its own sake. If you enjoy the process of learning, then studying will seem more like a journey of discovery than work. Use these pointers as tools for the road ahead as you work your way to fluency in your target language. Some language learners progress more quickly than others. Is this because they're smarter, more talented, or maybe just lucky? This is not the case. Most of the time, a lot of what determines your success in a language is the amount and consistency of the time you put into it and the way that you go about practicing. In this video, we'll take a look at five techniques of successful language learners that you can use in your own studies. Number one, hit the easy targets. Start with easy, attainable goals in the beginning. You might want to do as much studying as possible when you first start learning a new language, but this is a good way to get burned out fast by all of the obstacles you'll hit. Whether you're trying to learn 10 basic vocabulary words a week, or just want to review some grammar that you've already studied and might need a refresher on, having easier goals to get you started on your language learning journey can make it easier to keep progressing. And then, when you hit those goals, you feel motivated to make even more challenging ones. It's okay to start small and work towards hitting the harder targets. But when you're just starting to learn a language, go for the easier ones rather than overwhelming yourself with too much at once. There's always been a bit of debate in the language learning world as to whether or not you should learn grammar explicitly or implicitly. A lack of grammar should never keep you from trying to speak a foreign language. However, implicit learning by itself doesn't work well when dealing with more complicated grammar. Number two, break down the most difficult parts of the grammar. Tenses, verb conjugations, noun inflection, there are a lot of tough spots you'll find in grammar. As you come across these foreign grammar concepts, take some time to study and practice them. Hone in on one aspect at a time and practice it by writing out sentences or simply by speaking. Read different grammatical explanations and example sentences. While you don't want to spend all your time grinding out grammar exercises, 10 or 15 minutes a day of focused practice will help you master these otherwise difficult areas of the language. Another great way to master grammar is to work with whole phrases or conversations. This isn't as easy to do while you're speaking with someone, but it can be done by listening to audio. Our language podcast lessons are ideal for this because they feature native conversations that you can pause or replay over and over again. As you study and work through a conversation, First, look at the words and phrases that you do know. Then, without resorting to a translator or dictionary, do your best to figure out what any new or unfamiliar words mean. After that, feel free to look them up. If you work this way with whole sentences, you're much more likely to internalize the new grammar. Number three, practice with native speakers. Language course books, apps, and podcasts are all great ways to learn the language. But eventually, the rubber will have to meet the road and you'll need to start using what you learn. The best students take every opportunity they can to practice the language with real people. You might not be learning the most popular language, but even so, there are still a lot of other learners out there trying to master it like you. Take advantage of this and try to link up with a meetup or language exchange in your town or city. This way, you can connect with other learners and get tips and tricks from them that might help in your own studies. If you're unable to find an exchange in your area, 
take the search online. And you can even find some native speakers on free sites that connect language learners around the world. Here, you can help out a native speaker who's learning your language. You can learn from each other. It's a win-win. Number four, focus on being understood, not being perfect. Undoubtedly, when you begin to speak with native speakers, you will make a lot of mistakes. This is a natural part of the language learning process. In your first few conversations, you'll probably mispronounce, misconjugate, or altogether forget words. But that's okay. Learn to embrace these mistakes. As long as you're practicing with a native speaker who can give you accurate feedback, those mistakes can do nothing but help you improve. After getting feedback on your mistakes, the next most important thing in your spoken language practice will be to keep the conversation going. If you make a mistake, correct it and move on. If you can't remember a word, do your best to describe it in your target language to your language partner. Use what words you have in order to be understood, even if your sentence or diction comes out a little weird. Number five, keep a journal in your target language. Most people talk about how important it is to speak a language you're learning, but not nearly as many mention how powerful writing in the language can be. Writing in your target language lets you use all the material you've learned, but without the demands of a real-time conversation. Writing is also an excellent way to expose the words or phrases you don't know or are unsure about. You can write in an old-fashioned paper journal and do your best to check it, or have a friend look over it. You can also write entries online and have them corrected by native speakers. While it's not always easy to speak successfully, it is always rewarding. Use these tips as a guide to jumpstart your progress. No matter what, keep your head up, and after a bit of patience and hard work, you'll be speaking your target language soon enough. For some, learning a new language seems to come naturally. For others, the entire process feels more like a tooth and nail struggle. However, if you've had a negative experience learning a new language at one point in time, don't let that discourage you from trying again. The truth is that learning any language is never easy, but it's definitely possible. Sometimes the difference between success and failure has less to do with your abilities or talents and a lot more to do with the way you look at things. In this video, we're going to look at how to avoid five serious mistakes made by new language learners. Number one, listen before you speak. Being slow to speak and quick to listen is good life advice, whether or not you're learning a foreign language. Effective listening is essential to communication. As a beginner, there is a tendency to concentrate so much on what you're going to say and how you're going to say it that you can completely miss the meaning or heart of what the other person is trying to communicate. Not only will this impair your ability to listen in your target language, it will also stall what little conversation you had going. Remember, the conversations are a two-way street. If you're speaking more than listening, then you actually have more of a monologue on your hands than a dialogue. The inputs of language learning, listening and reading, are just as important as the outputs, speaking and writing. For a beginner, inputs are even more crucial, as they are the main way you acquire new vocabulary. We even go so far to say that for new students, the best method for learning involves more listening than it does speaking, though that may change with higher proficiency levels. Number two, don't be embarrassed when you do speak. People's next mistake usually comes from the other side of the spectrum, where new learners are too scared or embarrassed to contribute to a conversation. The fear of making mistakes and embarrassing yourself can paralyze your language learning. It's vital to remember that everyone makes mistakes. Even native speakers had to find their way through the language when they were children. Making mistakes while learning a new language is inevitable, but it's also a good thing. The faster you make mistakes, the quicker you can correct them and move on with your learning. So instead of being afraid to make mistakes, try looking at them as steps towards progress. In reality, that's what they really are. Number three, don't fixate on minor issues. If taken in all at once, a new language can feel overwhelming to learn. It's so easy to get discouraged by all your little mistakes and conversational mishaps and you lose sight of the progress you're making. In addition to mistakes, you'll also come across plateaus, where you study and practice consistently but don't see any results for a significant amount of time. But whether you face errors or plateaus, remember that these things are minor obstacles on the road to fluency. The most important thing is not to give up. Stick with it. If you stay persistent, your mistakes will be corrected and your abilities will improve. 
But if you slow down or throw in the towel completely, then you'll either subvert your progress or nix it altogether. So remember that as long as you're still studying and learning the language, you can't lose. It might feel like you're losing the battle for language learning for a little while, but hang in there. A practical way to help you stay motivated is to make small weekly goals. Research shows that goal setting has a significant impact on learning. Try picking one aspect of grammar or a collection of new words or phrases to study for the next seven days. At the end of the week, check your progress and measure your success. Setting little benchmarks like this will give you a rightful sense of accomplishment. Number four, remember that immersion isn't magical. A lot of people think that by moving to a foreign country, they will learn the language by osmosis. But whether you learn abroad or at home, you still need to study and practice the language. Living in a new country gives you way more opportunities to do this than staying at home. But if you don't consciously take advantage of these opportunities while living abroad, it won't benefit your language learning. If you're an expat living in a foreign country, there's a natural inclination to hang out around other expats. Learning a language and living in a foreign culture is hard and uncomfortable. For better or worse, we're often drawn to the easier road. If you made the decision to study abroad, then you wanna hang out with native speaking people as much as possible. You have the rest of your life to be with people who speak your language. This doesn't mean ignore your expat friends. Just be sure that you're giving proper attention to your language learning. Languages are better lived than they are learned. Number five, be open-minded. Languages are better lived than they are learned. When learning a new language, your brain will want to conform the new grammar and vocabulary to your native language norms and grammar rules. Ignore your brain on this one. At first, you might feel completely wrong saying a sentence that is in fact correct. After a certain point in language learning, there is a switch that goes off. When your brain finally realizes that you're not speaking your native language, but a new one altogether. This could take a while though, especially if this is your first time learning a new language. Until then, do what you know is correct, even if it feels a bit weird when you say it. The same goes for culture. Just as you want to be open to the differences in the language, don't forget to be open to the differences in the culture too. If you've studied your target language, but you can barely understand native speakers, you might be doing something wrong. You know the vocabulary and grammar they're using, but for some reason when they speak at a faster speed, you can't keep track of what's going on. Why is this happening? Have you spent all this time learning in vain? This is a common issue that all language learners face at some point or another. The truth is, it's actually a good problem to have because only students with a higher level of skill will experience it. When you know a lot of the language, but have trouble understanding native speakers, the problem is almost always with your listening skills. Learning what words mean and practicing how to use them in a sentence are both invaluable skills to develop. But people often forget that in addition to speaking, writing, and reading, we have to develop our listening skills in a foreign language as well. In this video, we'll look at three practical ways to improve your listening skills. Number one, practice active listening. One of the best ways to practice listening is to, well, listen to your target language. But this doesn't mean putting on some music and listening to it in the background as you do other things. You need to practice active listening. Get your hands on a recording of spoken language. You can use a movie, news broadcast, or a podcast. You can even try subscribing to a YouTube channel. Listen to a segment of the audio and do your best to write down what you hear. 
after a couple tries at this, go back and double check what you wrote against the script of what was actually said. If you're watching a movie, you can double check yourself by turning on the subtitles. Our language learning program is one of the best tools for developing your listening skills. You can listen to the conversation in a lesson and then check it back against the lesson transcripts. This is simple, easy, and you can be sure that the transcripts are correct. Number two, practice pronunciation. Any problems you have pronouncing new words correctly will be reflected back in your listening skills. It's hard for your brain to decipher and remember a sound, be it a letter or a word, that you don't know how to make yourself. A good accent will give you the ability to hear and pick out the otherwise unnatural new sounds. To develop your accent, focus on any sounds or letters that feel difficult or unnatural for you. Once you get more comfortable with the basic sounds, start to combine them using words and whole sentences. Listen to native speakers as much as possible and take note of how words and sounds can blend, morph, or get dropped in rapid speech. Do your best to listen to this phenomenon and imitate what you hear. Focus more on how the syllables are said together rather than simply saying the words next to each other. There is often a significant difference between how words are said individually and how they are said when spoken together in a rapid fire sentence. This is a big part of the reason language learners can know a lot of vocabulary and grammar but still not understand native speakers. Our playback feature is great for pronunciation practice. You can play back the podcast itself or listen to words individually. You can even listen back at a slower speed if you're having trouble catching the correct pronunciation at native speaker speed. Number three, make listening part of your routine. Now that you've started practicing active listening and pronunciation, make it a part of your regular learning. A lot a specific amount of time for each of your listening activities. For example, you might practice 10 minutes of active listening, followed by 10 minutes of practicing vowels, and then 10 minutes of imitation practice with a podcast. Now, you don't have to use this schedule exactly. Tailor it to your own needs and availability. The point is that you should make a conscious and decisive effort to practice your listening skills on a regular basis. It could be 30 minutes a day, or it might be 10. What matters most is that you practice consistently. These three tips will help you close any gap that might exist between your knowledge of your target language and your listening abilities. Understanding native speakers may seem daunting at first, but with a little time and perseverance, you will see your skills improve. Few things are more discouraging than putting in the work and effort to learn a foreign language, only to not use it for a while and forget a large part of what you studied. Once you have a good handle on a language, it's not hard to practice it so that it stays in the forefront of your mind. In this video, we'll take a look at five practical ways you can make your target language a part of your daily life so that you don't forget it. Number one, use language exchanges. The idea behind a language exchange is that you find someone who fluently speaks your target language and is also interested in learning your native language. During the exchange, you spend half the time speaking in the language you're learning and the other half in the language they're learning. This kind of exchange is a great way to practice your speaking skills and cement the material you've learned into your brain. One great thing about practicing through a language exchange is that your language partner is a fellow language learner. They will be able to sympathize with your struggles and even give you some insightful tips from their own personal experience. Most major cities will have at least one meetup or language club where you can practice languages with people from around the world. But sometimes it can be hard to find people who speak the language you're learning. If you can't find a local exchange or if there are no native speakers in your city, you can connect with native speakers through online language exchanges. There are numerous free sites that allow you to search for users based on country and language and have a text, audio, or video practice session. Number two, immerse yourself digitally. Most phones, laptops, and apps will allow you to change the language of their interface. Why not change it to your target language? This simple change may seem small, but it can actually be an effective way to reinforce your use of the language. Your language skills are like a muscle. If you use them on a regular basis, then your skill in the language will be in good shape. The more you use your language skills, the easier it will be to remember things. However, if you go for long stretches without using the language, then you might have a problem. Those linguistic muscles will start to get weak before too long, and you'll notice a drop in your language ability. Simply changing the language on your electronic devices won't equate to any heavy lifting in a foreign language, but it could be comparable to a warm-up or a quick workout. Remember that you probably use electronic devices every day. 
If you can use at least some of that time thinking in your target language while using them each week, that adds up to a huge amount of time and can keep your knowledge fresh. Number three, teach others a language. You don't have to be an expert in a new language to lend a hand to another language learner. Helping a beginner through the language will not only make you feel good about helping someone out, it will also help you use the language and keep your skills sharp. Remember those language exchanges we talked about? Well, what if you looked for other learners so that you could help them in the language? Don't worry if you don't feel qualified to teach the language. They're not looking to get their PhD in linguistics. Most likely, a new learner would appreciate someone who's been down the road before, someone to show them some common pitfalls and shortcuts. Have you ever been a complete newbie in something and been graciously helped by someone with more experience? Pay it forward and be that expert to someone else. Your language muscles will thank you for it. Number four, keep a journal or blog. Writing out your thoughts in a foreign language is one of the best ways to sharpen your skills. It forces you to take time to construct sentences and it will reveal your weak points very quickly. Journaling is also one of the easiest and cheapest ways to practice. All you need is a pen and a notebook. If you're not the journaling type, don't worry. You don't have to write an autobiography. Simply recounting your day or describing an experience will be enough to get your language juices flowing. The entries can be long, but they don't have to be. This exercise is flexible and can take any shape you want. Try writing short daily entries. You can even post them online for native speakers to correct. This way, you can hold yourself accountable and write regularly. There are several free sites that allow you to post an entry and have it reviewed by native speakers. Number five, entertain yourself in the language. Books, movies, YouTube videos, language learning websites, music, the list goes on. There's an endless supply of media out there, so you're likely to find something that interests you in your target language. Whether you love sports, rock music, or sewing, you're sure to find something to entertain you in your target language. Learning a language is hard, but remembering it doesn't have to be. These ideas are here to help jumpstart your brain. These aren't the only ways to practice your target language either. Do your best to use the language on a daily basis and make it a part of your everyday life. Remember, all languages aren't just spoken, they're lived. The fear of making mistakes is one of the biggest roadblocks to language learning. Out of all the discomforts that come with learning a foreign language, nothing looms quite as daunting in the mind of a beginner. It's almost as if we're hardwired to want perfection when we speak. However, the reality is that mistakes are unavoidable. In fact, mistakes are an integral part of the learning process. Think of small children who are just starting to learn language. They mispronounce words, they use words incorrectly, and their grammar isn't very good. Sometimes they even make up their own words. Research shows that this is all a natural part of the process. If making mistakes made up such a huge part of learning our native language, why do you expect it to be any different when learning a foreign one? In this video, we'll talk about six ways you can benefit from your mistakes while learning language. Number one, be humble. There's no room for pride when you're learning a new language. If you're a beginner, native speakers will likely be very accommodating with your mistakes and slower reaction times during conversations. There's no reason to be embarrassed. Remember that it's a sign of respect to learn another person's language. No one expects you to speak flawlessly right from the start. No one's going to hold your mistakes against you, so make sure you don't either. Number two, don't play the comparison game. Whether it's a native speaker or another person learning the language, don't make the mistake of comparing your progress to someone else's. No doubt, at the beginning, there will be times when it feels like everyone is speaking perfectly and you're left in the dust. But try not to get discouraged. It's your race to run, not theirs. Everyone has their own story, their own reason, and their own method for learning. Comparing your progress to someone else's progress is like comparing apples and oranges. It's easy to stress out when someone speaks perfectly while you're struggling to make the most basic sentences. But don't forget that while you can easily see someone else's success, you're much less likely to see the hard work that got them there. Every speaker you meet had to learn the language at some point. Whether it was as a child or as an adult, they too had to wade through their mistakes before they could speak fluently. Number three, get feedback on your mistakes. Anytime you write or speak your target language, try to get feedback from someone who speaks that language. You can make mistakes day and night, but if they're never corrected, they do you no good. If you can't learn from a mistake, or if you don't know that it's a mistake, it won't help you. 
Many in the language learning community hold that feedback is an integral part of the language acquisition process. Encourage friends and language partners to correct your speaking anytime, all the time. Worst case scenario, you'll make a mistake 100 times and get corrected 100 times. It might seem frustrating, but it's all worth it on the 101st time when you finally remember your mistake and start speaking correctly. Some mistakes will be easy to fix and you'll adjust your speaking right away. Others might take a while. Speaking a foreign language is a little bit like juggling. There are a lot of moving pieces you have to keep in place. Whether it's pronunciation, grammar, or vocabulary, getting feedback on your effort will help refine your language skills until you feel comfortable in the language. Number four, listen to your brain. After all the practice and feedback, eventually you'll start to notice that certain words come to mind without having to think about them. Instead of having to scan your brain for the latest new vocabulary word, you begin to instinctively come up with a word for a given sentence. Don't hesitate to blurt this word out. Sometimes it will be completely wrong. Other times it will be dead on. When words start coming to mind instinctively, that means your brain is starting to get more and more used to using a new language. The incorrect words are sort of like growing pains. You'll have them for a little while, but over time you'll encounter them less and less until all of your instinctual words are correct. So don't let the fear of making a mistake short circuit your brain's natural learning process. Go with whatever word your brain gives you. Number five, never take the easy way out. If there are two ways to say what you wanna say in your target language, one you know and are comfortable with, and the other you're not sure of, use the one you're least comfortable with. Purposely choose subjects and sentence constructions that are difficult for you. Don't get complacent and fall into the trap of using the same phrase over and over again, or having the same type of conversation with a language partner. You always want to push your language skill boundaries to stretch them even further. Number six, enjoy the language for its own sake. Small children not only make a ton of mistakes when they learn to speak, they also have a ton of fun. To them, life and language are both giant mysterious adventures. They aren't worried about making progress, impressing people, or speaking perfectly. Take a note from their playbook. Enjoy the language as you learn it. Let your focus be on the beauty and magic of the language. Savor the times you get to use it. If you loosen up and enjoy the ride, you'll learn much faster. Mistakes are a powerful and indispensable part of learning a language. We hope this video inspires you to stop being afraid of them and start embracing them. Are you improving? How to assess your language skills? Have you ever wondered, am I actually getting better with my target language? If you want to know how to check and see if you've improved or not, then keep watching. Today you'll learn why assessment can mean the difference between fluency and failure, how to assess your language skills, even if you're learning on your own, and much more. Are you improving? How to assess your language skills. So, have you ever wondered, am I actually improving with my target language? Feeling like you're not improving can hurt your motivation. On the flip side, if you notice yourself understanding more of the language than before, you can feel good, and that can fuel your motivation to keep going. But it's not easy to spot your improvement. It's tricky with language. It's not like going to the gym, where you can see your muscles in the mirror. This is where assessment comes in. What's assessment? The easiest example of assessment is a test. If you go to a language class, you'll get a test on the first day. The goal of the assessment test is to understand where your language level is and any test after that is a way to see how much you've improved. This is ongoing assessment. So assessment is checking where you are now and how far you've come with your language learning. Assessment lets you see where you've improved and helps you find what you need to work on. If you're serious about learning a language, it's one of the best things you can do to stay on track, stay motivated, correct your mistakes, and reach fluency. But assessing yourself is also hard if you're learning on your own. So what can you do? Here's how you can assess your language skills, whether you're learning with our program or not. Number one, if you're a Premium Plus user, retake the assessment test. Technically, you can only take this once, but if you get in touch with our support team, we'll give you the link. If you're using any other resource, find a way to test yourself. Look for practice tests, apply for a proficiency test, take online quizzes, anything that forces you to test your language skills. Number two, revisit old lessons. An easier way to self-assess your language level is to revisit old lessons. You can do this with any program you're learning with. If you've truly made progress, then you should be able to understand the lesson dialogues with no problem. If not, then you know that you need to review them some more. Number three, try harder lessons. 
also something you can do with any language resource. If you're using our program, try lessons from a higher level. If you're a lower intermediate, try upper intermediate lessons. If you don't understand anything, that's fine. But if you do, then that's a good sign that you've improved and are ready for harder lessons. Number four, for reading, check out our extensive reading books. These are available for all levels, from absolute beginner to advanced. You can reread old ones or try harder ones to see where your current level is. You'll find these books in our lesson library. This will help you assess your reading and comprehension skills. Number five, for speaking, use our voice recording tool. If you can easily repeat the lines from the conversation, that's a good sign. Or if you're using another program, try to shadow the provided conversations. If you can do it without a problem, then you've made progress and are ready to go to the next level. Number six, for writing, try and copy out our lesson dialogue by hand. The point here is to see if you can write smoothly or not as a way of assessing your writing. You can also do this with any textbook. You can also take a picture of your writing and send it to your Premium Plus teacher for feedback. Number seven, use our Premium Plus assignments. If you're a Premium Plus member, you can ask your teacher to send you weekly assignments based on your needs, whether for reading, writing, speaking, or listening. And they'll provide you feedback so you can see where you are with each skill. So to recap, one, take our assessment test, two, revisit old lessons, three, try harder lessons, four, use our extensive reading books for reading, five, use our voice recording tool, six, write out dialogues by hand, and seven, take advantage of our assignments. Remember, the point of assessment is not to pass or fail, but to see where you've improved and where you need to work. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Great work, here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description. Hey everyone, welcome to the Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is 10 Habits of Highly Effective Language Learners. Do you feel like you're not making much language progress? That you could do better, but you're just not sure what step to take? In today's episode, you'll discover the top 10 habits of effective language learners and what these learners do differently. Do you have any of these habits? Keep watching to find out. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the Being Funny Conversation Cheat Sheet. Want to be able to tell jokes in your target language or tell someone how funny or unfunny they are? You'll learn how with this brand new cheat sheet. Second, all the language you need for everyday life. Get all of our best conversation cheat sheets rolled up into one. This bundle will get you speaking more. Download it right now before it disappears. Third, must know book vocabulary. If you love reading and want to talk about books, check out this one minute lesson. It'll teach you all of the must know vocabulary. Fourth, phrases to use with the doctor. Learn how to say phrases like, I have an appointment, I don't feel well, and much more. Fifth, summer plans conversation lesson. Can you talk about your summer plans? Like take a trip and relax at the beach or stay at home and sit on the internet? You'll be able to with this one minute lesson. 10 habits of highly effective language learners. If you walk away from this lesson and remember only one habit, let it be this one. Habit number one, setting small measurable goals with a deadline. For example, do 30 of our language lessons by the end of this month. 30 is small. You're not learning the whole language here. It's measurable. Either you did 28 or you hit 30. And you know when to reach it by, which gives you motivation. Let's expand on this point even further. You should also set goals for every study session. For example, if your goal is to do 30 lessons in a month, and if a month has 30 days, you know you need to do one lesson a day. Our lessons can be anywhere from three to 15 minutes long. That gives you your goal for the day. For your study session, do one lesson and spend up to 15 minutes on it. That way, you're not confused about what to do or how long to study for. You know what you can expect to accomplish. Another powerful lesson here is that goals take away anxiety. Here's why. Imagine you set a big, vague goal, like I wanna be fluent someday. 
You don't have a plan, but you buy a textbook. You read the first chapter, and then you start worrying about whether you're really learning. You don't know how far you should go, and you have no real plan or specific goal. Then you start worrying about if you'll ever be fluent, so you lose motivation and quit. But if you set a small goal, you know you need to do just one lesson a day. 15 minutes, that's it. Habit number two, creating routines. This ties back to the first habit. If you set a goal like do 30 lessons in one month, you know that you need to do one lesson a day. This is how you create your routine. You should decide when and where to study as well. Even if you're putting in just five minutes a day, you have to know when and where you'll do it. Why? So you can make time, make a mental note that this time is language time and say no to other things that come up. Just like you know when it's time to brush your teeth, you should know when it's time to do a little language learning. Creating and sticking with a routine is a great habit to have because the routine is what turns your goals into reality. Habit number three, don't cram. Most of us crammed back in school. We'd wait till the last day, then study for five hours. Even if you pass the test, you still forget it all. But with language, you want to remember it so you can use it. Luckily, our lessons are short and sweet, so you're not spending hours on your studies. The point is that five minutes a day every day is better than doing five-hour cram sessions and burning yourself out. Habit number four, prepare lines and conversations ahead of time. What do we mean by prepare? Imagine you want to open a bank account in your target language. You can show up at the front desk and grunt and point and try to communicate with body language. Or you can prepare. You look up words like bank account, open, and all the relevant phrases. Or even easier, you can find a lesson on our site. If you want to prepare for daily conversations, then check out our top 25 questions you must know for conversations lessons. These teach you how to ask and answer basic questions like, how are you? How was your weekend? And much more. In fact, most of our lessons are based around practical daily dialogues. We give you the exact lines to say, whether for conversations with friends, for shopping, or for opening a bank account. So preparing is a must. It gives you a foundation of words and phrases you can use. It places you miles ahead of other learners. Number five, get into the habit of producing output. Input is taking language in, listening and reading. Output is putting language out, so speaking and writing. The big point here is that it's very easy to sit back and listen and read. You can listen to lessons all day long, but listening helps with listening. It won't get you speaking the language. Here are some of the easiest ways to produce output. For speaking, repeat what you hear out loud. For writing, copy out the lesson vocabulary and dialogue by hand. Again, you need to practice. Habit number six, come back and review. A lot of times, what we learn goes in one ear and out the other, which means we don't really learn. This is where reviewing comes in. When you're done with a lesson, come back a few days later and do another round. You'll likely come across words and phrases you've forgotten. Or even easier, download the dialogue track or the lesson notes and review those at a later date. Number seven, look for solutions. An important difference between experienced learners and new learners is in how they react when they don't understand something. Inexperienced learners rely completely on their study tools and tend to blame the tools for their lack of progress. You'll often hear people talk about giving up because a textbook was too boring or because the textbook didn't teach them to speak. Experienced learners look for solutions. If they realize a specific study tool, like a textbook, isn't going to help them speak, they look for a better solution. Textbooks can teach you grammar and vocabulary words, so they're valuable resources. But if speaking is your goal, you have to look for ways to practice speaking, like reading out loud or working with a conversation partner. Number eight, focus on what you're good at. The reason we say this is because it's good for motivation overall. If you're generally better at speaking than writing, you're more likely to enjoy it, which means you're more likely to continue with it. That means it's a successful routine, and routines are what turn your goals into reality. Number nine, don't procrastinate. This is easier said than done, but it's important. A lot of us procrastinate as a result of overthinking. For example, let's say you plan on studying for an hour today. So you remember, ah, I have to study tonight for a whole hour. I don't think I have the time. It's gonna be hard, but I should really try. And it becomes something you have to do, which is a hassle. You've already ruined it for yourself in your head. But if you have a small and measurable goal and an easy routine, just five minutes a day, for example, that's not much work to do. Five minutes and you're done. 
If you want to beat procrastination, make sure to make your goals and routines easy and realistic. Number 10. Remember that learning a language is a marathon and not a sprint. It's a long-term game. Remembering this is a good habit to have. If you're having a bad day or if you missed a goal, that doesn't mean it's all over. It's just a minor stumble in the grand scheme. So let's recap. Number one, get into the habit of setting small, measurable goals. Number two, create a routine. Number three, don't cramp. Number four, prepare lines and conversations ahead of time. Number five, get into the habit of producing output. Number six, come back and review. Number seven, look for solutions. Number eight, focus on what you're good at. Number nine, don't procrastinate. Number 10, remember that learning a language is a marathon and not a sprint. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Most people who learn a foreign language learn it so that they can one day have real life conversations with native speakers. When you start out learning and crack open your first textbook or listen to your first podcast, having a real conversation can feel like a fantasy. When everything about a language feels new, it can be overwhelming. But this couldn't be further from the truth. While it does take a significant amount of time and effort to become fluent, having a conversation might not be as far off as you think. In this video, we'll look at three ways you can boost your conversational skills and start talking to native speakers. Number one, find native speakers and practice with them. It's unlikely you live near a big group of native speakers to practice with. If you happen to be in a major or international city, your chances may be better. Check and see if your city has a general language exchange. Chances are there could be a native speaker there who is also trying to learn another language. Practicing in person with a native speaker is probably the most interesting option for honing your speaking skills. But if you can't find anyone where you live, the next best option is to look online. Luckily for language learners, the past 10 years or so have seen an explosion in online language exchange sites. On these websites, you can search for someone who is a native speaker of your target language and is also learning your native language. The idea behind a language exchange is that you communicate with them via video or text chat, and half of the time, they help you practice your target language, and for the other half, you help them practice theirs. Practicing via an online language exchange is a highly effective way to practice your conversational skills. Number two, work on pronunciation. Pronunciation is often an overlooked skill when it comes to learning a foreign language. Most people think of a good foreign accent as a luxury rather than a necessity. But what most people don't talk about is how having a good accent boosts your listening and comprehension skills. If you can hear a sound from a foreign language and know how to make it yourself, then you're more likely to understand native speakers when they talk at normal speed, and you're also more likely to remember any new words or phrases you come across. Having a good accent means that the language no longer sounds foreign. Instead, it sounds familiar, maybe even natural. So how do you go about perfecting your accent? The best way is to break down the language into its individual sounds. Make note of any sounds that are the same or similar to your native language and of those that are different. Of the sounds that are different, spend your time practicing the ones that you find the hardest to say correctly. After you're comfortable with the individual sounds, you can start linking together words and phrases. This is where accent practice starts to get really fun and interesting. Get your hands on some native speaker audio from a TV show, song, or podcast. Play the audio back and listen closely a few times. Take note of how words blend together in speech. Then, do your best to imitate what you hear, trying to match the speaker's emphasis and intonation. Our language learning program's playback feature is perfect for this. Record yourself and compare it to the original recording. Rinse and repeat until you're comfortable with the audio selection, and then move on to something more difficult. This is how you can break through the accent barrier and really start to make the language your own. Number three, learn phrases, not just individual words. Learning grammar and in individual words is great, but it's not the only approach you should take if you want to speak fluently. In addition to your regular grammar and vocabulary, try learning whole phrases, even if you aren't totally sure how they work grammatically. Learn phrases that are specific to your needs. It's a good idea to learn phrases that are grouped around a certain setting or subject, such as simple greetings or introductions, questions for getting to know someone, or traveling comfortably. You can even learn filler phrases, which you can use so that you have something to say when, well, you don't know what to say. 
Learning phrases like this will help you become conversational faster. You may not understand what you're saying literally, but as long as you know the general meaning behind the phrase and know when to use it, you'll be able to talk like a native. Eventually, your knowledge of grammar and vocabulary should catch up with the phrases you know. Learning a new language should feel like an adventure. There will be plateaus and periods in your learning where it feels like you're hitting a wall, but being able to speak with native speakers and have real conversations will help you combat language fatigue. After all, talking to someone face-to-face -face in a foreign language is one of the main reasons we start learning in the first place. If you want to learn a language, but don't have a lot of time to dedicate to the endeavor, you need to study as efficiently as possible. You probably aren't a language learning expert or a world traveler. You might have school or a job or two. So in this video, we'll give you three ways to help you learn language more efficiently so that you get the most out of your time and effort. Number one, use your time when you have it. The most valuable resource you have as a language learner is time. While you may not have to spend money to learn a language, you will have to spend time. Hours and minutes are a currency that you trade on a weekly basis to grow in your language learning. Language learning is probably a priority for you. It might not be the number one priority, like keeping your job or taking care of your family, but it does have to be important enough for you to invest significant amounts of time into your learning. There's just no way around it. That being said, use your time wisely. Because of previous commitments, you can quickly fall into the trap of putting your language learning off, thinking, oh, I'll do it next week, or Saturday, I'll do it Saturday. Needless to say, a few weeks can go by and you haven't really learned or practiced anything. If you find that happening, then take some time and reevaluate your approach. It's probably a long shot for you to be able to spend hours every day learning a new foreign language, but you can use your time to spend an hour or even just 10 minutes a day, every day, studying or practicing. If you're on a busy schedule, an hour a day can sound like reaching for the stars, so start slowly with just a five minute lesson. Over time, as you learn more and it becomes more routine, you'll want to spend more time studying. And your studying doesn't even need to be all at once. Make use of the little gaps of time you have in the day. Listen to a podcast while driving to and from work. Review new words while on lunch break or right before bed. Even a quick review while in line at the store or waiting for the bus. Together, these moments add up. This way, your little study session will add up to around 60 minutes of practice every day. You'll quickly be able to see significant improvement in your language abilities. Number two, don't method jump. When you're new to language learning, there's a temptation to try out the newest course, app, or method. There are more language learning tools and courses than I can list. But jumping around from podcast to podcast or from textbook to textbook can really hinder your learning process. It's important to find the best method for you, but when you do, stick with it. Don't get distracted by the newest app, or if you suddenly find something faster, cheaper, claiming it can teach you a language with no work on your part. Stick with your learning course or tool. Consistent practice over a period of time is what is essential for language learning. If you hit a bump or plateau, you might be tempted to think, maybe there's a faster or better way to learn. So you search around and buy the next best language learning tool, only to use it for a couple weeks and realize it wasn't really any better than the last course you tried, and the same difficulties you had are still there. If you're learning your first new language and you pick a specific method or course, we suggest you stick with it for at least three to four months. You actually hurt yourself in the long run if you constantly switch between resources because you never give yourself the opportunity to progress. Number three, focus on one thing at a time. When you decide to learn a new language, you're gonna be really excited. You have all your resources lined up, a plan in place, and you're ready to go. You think you'll spend three to four hours a day practicing and that you'll be fluent in no time, but that's only for about three days then you probably will get a little bit discouraged and avoid it for another three days. And this process might repeat three or four times before you realize that you might be approaching things the wrong way. You can't devour a whole new language in a very short time. You'll burn out immediately. It's better to focus on one small part of the language at a time, either a specific grammar point or a specific vocabulary topic. In the beginning, these should be based on the parts of the language you'll use right away. Even in the business world, research shows that replacing less important tasks with ones that add value and help you reach your goals is the best way to get the most out of your time. As you advance through the language and your level increases, try to pinpoint the harder aspects of the language and work on them one at a time. Learning a foreign language isn't easy. It takes time and work, but it is possible. 
If you stick to your learning plans and stay focused, you will see improvement in your skills and find satisfaction in using the language. Remember that learning a language is really more like a journey. It doesn't have to feel like school or work. Savor your experience with learning and enjoy every step along the way. There's a saying that trust is hard to earn, yet easy to lose. The same can be said for foreign language skills. Being proficient in a new language takes hours of practice and study. But if you stop using the language, it will fade from your memory. To put it simply, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's why it's so important to incorporate the language into your daily life as much as possible if you're serious about learning. But how do you do that if you don't live in the country? In this video, we'll look at five ways you can use your target language on a daily basis and immerse yourself in the language, even if you don't live near native speakers. Number one, live your digital life in your target language. As access to technology increases, people are living more and more of their lives on the internet. Use this lifestyle of constant connection to your advantage. Most devices, laptops, phones, tablets, or other connected gadgets have an option to put their operating system in another language. Why not put the devices you use in the language you're studying? Just scrolling through things on your smartphone won't make you fluent, but it will force you to interact with the language every day in a small way. When it comes to foreign language acquisition, every little bit helps. You can even switch your social media platforms or web browsers to your target language. The time you spend on your devices now becomes study time. Number two, relax in your target language. Everybody likes to kick back and entertain themselves in some way. Why not use this part of your day to learn more? Try looking for TV shows, music, or movies in your target language. You can use subtitles or follow along by reading lyrics if your level in the language is on the lower side. It also helps if you approach this language learning time as fun and not work. Don't force yourself to watch movies you don't like or listen to a kind of music you have no interest in. The point is to keep a casual, relaxed study environment. Number three journal or keep a diary in your target language. It might not be so common to write out your thoughts or the events of your day in a journal anymore, but it can be a great language learning habit. You can do this by writing by hand in a notebook or on a laptop using a foreign language keyboard. That way you don't have to worry about your handwriting and can even practice typing in your target language. As you try to express your thoughts in a foreign language, you might find gaps in your vocabulary. This is a good thing. Filling in these gaps is what will build your skills and increase your ability in the language. If you're not sure how to correct your own journal entries, you might want to try finding a site online which will allow you to upload writing and have it corrected by native speakers. Number four, language exchange with native speakers. A language exchange is a classic way to learn a language. In a language exchange, two people who speak different native languages help each other practice. For example, if you're a native Spanish speaker and are learning English, you would find a native English speaker who is learning Spanish. Partners take turns speaking their target language, and the native speaker provides help and corrections. This is one of the most ideal ways to practice your speaking skills. So, where do you meet native speakers? If you don't live in a country where the language is spoken, your first option is to check around locally. Are there any language clubs or exchanges around your city? Check out meetup websites. You can also check around local universities. If there's a language club that meets nearby, you may be able to find some native speakers. If you can't find a partner or a group to meet with in person, check online. There are a good number of foreign language exchanges, most of which are completely free to use. Number five, work with someone else learning the language. Another great way to sharpen your language skills is to work with another person who is also learning the language. If your level is higher than theirs, you'll learn a lot by trying to teach them or help them understand difficult concepts. If your level is lower, you'll be able to draw from their advice and experience. If nothing else, you have a new language partner to practice with. It's easy to forget sometimes that using a foreign language is actually what makes language learning so fulfilling. Sometimes, after hitting a plateau or struggling with the language, you can forget why you started learning it in the first place. So whether you're learning in a class or you're teaching yourself the language, daily immersion will help you enjoy the language and keep your skills sharp. Hey everyone, welcome to The Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the power of mistakes. Have you ever made a mistake in your target language while talking with a native speaker? Maybe you said the wrong word, 
maybe you misconjugated a verb. When you make a mistake, you usually don't forget about it, right? Well, that's the power of mistakes. And in today's episode, you're going to find out why making mistakes is crucial to learning a language. Do you know the most common adverbs of frequency? You will with this one minute lesson. Learn how to say rarely, always, often, sometimes, and much more in your target language. Fourth, must know summer clothes vocab. Do you know how to say t-shirt or shorts in your target language? If you don't, you can learn how. This one minute lesson will give you all the words you need for summer clothing. Fifth, the top 50 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus teaches you 50 must know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. Okay, today's topic is how remembering your mistakes can help you learn faster. First, take a moment and think of a time when you made a mistake. Maybe you were at work, maybe you were at school, maybe you were shopping or in another public place. We can all probably clearly remember many mistakes we've made. We also remember the reactions of the people around us. Some people are understanding, some people aren't so understanding. But why do we remember these situations so clearly? Psychologically speaking, negative things tend to impact us more than positive things. For example, if we're asked to choose between gaining friends or gaining money and losing friends or losing money, we'll choose not to lose friends or lose money, not to gain. This is called loss aversion. We tend to avoid losing more than we work on gaining. We spend time thinking about our negative past experiences to avoid them in the future. Because of this, negative events like making mistakes stay in our minds for a very long time. And this happens in language learning. If you make a language mistake while chatting with a native speaker, it'll probably be hard to forget. Yes, it's true that when we're learning another language, we don't always know when we've made a mistake. But when we realize we've used the wrong word, used grammar incorrectly, spelled something wrong or similar, we tend to remember the situation vividly. In some languages, just a tiny change in pronunciation, tone, or writing could make a big difference. So mistakes are a big source of worry for many learners. But the fact that mistakes are very hard for us to forget can be a powerful tool when learning a language. We want to avoid the feeling of embarrassment that comes after a mistake, so we work hard to correct ourselves. Past mistakes can motivate us to try harder. We can use our mistakes as a tool in our language learning, but we can't make these emotionally powerful mistakes by reading a textbook or even by taking a lesson with a teacher. The only way you can make these mistakes is by speaking in real conversations and messing up. So, what can you take away from this? Let's jump into the second part. How to use mistakes in your language learning. We can give advice like go ahead and make mistakes, but that's easier said than done. Here are three tips to help you make the most of your mistakes. One, speak in your target language as much as possible. Why? Because part of the learning process is making mistakes. Accept that mistakes are going to happen. If you're not making any mistakes ever, then you're probably not challenging yourself. Two, look for opportunities to speak. Many learners have trouble finding public places to practice the language they're studying. See if there are language groups in your community or at your school. If you have trouble with that, look online and be creative. You don't need to search for groups specifically for language learners. See if you can find a hobby discussion in your target language. Maybe you'll find a news discussion group. Think outside the box. Find somewhere to practice and make mistakes. When you do mess up, you'll probably remember it. Three, build on your experiences. Think carefully about your conversations after you have them and work to make them longer each time. If you made a mistake in your first conversation, think about how to fix it. If you said only a few sentences in your first discussion, work to speak for 15 or 30 seconds on the next discussion. Challenge yourself. Many learners have trouble finding opportunities to speak that work with their schedule and their level. If you're not sure where else you can practice, you can consider hiring a tutor. If you're a Premium Plus member on our website, you can practice with your teacher. It's still important, where possible, to practice and make mistakes in real life situations. This will help you to more carefully reflect on your conversations and work to improve. It isn't quite the same as studying with a textbook or a hired tutor. This strong desire to avoid making a mistake will help you work to improve. You'll be motivated to try harder. This can help you learn faster. 
So, thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. So, you decided to learn a new language. At first, the idea seemed exciting. You bought a phrase book, dictionary, and a subscription to an online class, ready to dive headfirst into the language. For the first day or two, all was well. You gained ground quickly, learning a few basic phrases and words. A week before, learning that language was just a dream, but now you're actually doing it. Then, the third and fourth day roll around. The excitement is wearing off. You encouraged yourself to continue, and another week or two goes by, but with a lot less progress. Suddenly, learning a new language doesn't fill you with excitement anymore. Now it feels more like dread. Sometimes it feels like you're drowning in grammatical cases, verb conjugations, and wonky pronunciation. It all seems too much to handle, so you start to think about giving up. But we encourage you not to give up. Learning a foreign language is difficult. We won't pretend like it isn't. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. Sometimes you just need to take a step back, reevaluate your approach, and come back to the language with a different perspective. In this video, we'll look at four tips for when learning a new language feels overwhelming. Number one, set aside a designated study time. Consistency is key when learning a foreign language. Studying 15 minutes seven days a week will benefit you more than cramming in two hours one day a week. Set aside an amount of time that works best for you. If you can afford to spend an hour every day learning, that's awesome, go for it. But don't feel bad if you can't spend that much time. Even 10 or 15 minutes a day goes a long way. Breaking up your learning into manageable time segments will relieve a lot of the stress that can come with studying a new language. Learning is not a race. Go at your own pace and try not to compare your progress with anyone else's. Number two, take it one bite at a time. Now that you have your schedule under control, it's time to focus on what you'll actually be studying. It's recommended that every one to two weeks, you focus on learning a very specific piece of the language. It could be a conjugation group, a case, tense, or a collection of theme vocabulary. Whatever you choose, hone in on it and do your best to feel comfortable with it before you move on to something else. Ever heard the saying, how do you eat an elephant? Focusing on one thing at a time helps you break the language into digestible chunks. Number three, expose yourself to the language in different ways. Don't just sit around reading about grammar all day. Obviously, knowledge of grammar is important, but you want to spice up your practice as much as possible. In addition to grammatical study, try to mix in a combination of reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Try to practice reading by either translating a simple article into your native language, or maybe if you're a beginner, pick up a children's book in your target language. For writing, you can try to write out a fictional conversation between you and yourself, even. Use the phrases you know to create a mock conversation, and don't use any words you can't think of or you don't remember. To practice speaking, you can find native speakers locally at a language club or at a meetup. You can also find them online in a language exchange. For listening, a great podcast should do the trick. Spread out each type of practice, listening, reading, speaking, and writing across your regular language study schedule. This will give you a balanced experience in the language and should help keep things interesting. This method also works well when you use it to focus on a single aspect of the language like we talked about above. Number four, set mini goals, not just big ones. If your only language learning goal is to be fluent, you're likely setting yourself up for disappointment. While speaking fluently can be your ultimate goal, it shouldn't be your only one. Try to set mini goals month by month and week by week. It could be something simple. Learn 20 new verbs, practice a new case, or speak with three native speakers. As long as it's specific and reasonable to achieve in a shorter amount of time, it should work fine. Not having mini goals alongside your ultimate goal is a lot like sprinting across a huge open field. There's no reference point, so for much of the time, it feels like you're not any closer to your goal. It's not that you're not moving forward, it just feels like you're not. Without any trees or buildings to run past, it seems like you're running in place. Mini goals are like the trees and buildings of your language race. They help you see that you're moving forward and give you a sense of accomplishment. The desire for perfection can get in the way of your progress. Don't freak out when you struggle to speak or make a mistake. It's all a part of the learning process. Also, don't be afraid to speak, even if you know what you'll say won't be totally correct. It's better to do your best to communicate in the language and get it wrong than to never try at all. 
Learning a new language isn't always easy. In fact, oftentimes it's very hard. Don't let that discourage you though. Use these tips to help keep you focused yet unstressed in your language learning. A little perseverance will go a long way. Before long, you'll be speaking better than you may have thought was possible. Reading in a foreign language is great, but a big challenge related to reading is that you often need a high level of fluency before it gets really fun. And if a book isn't fun, then you're not going to want to read it. The entire point of sitting down with a book is to enjoy it and have a good time being absorbed in the story or learning the information. And that's just not going to happen if you need to look up every second word. It'll take you out of the story, and it will feel like a chore, like an assignment from school where you have to read the book for a class. But there is a resource that you might not know about that can really help your skills, bilingual books. In this video, we'll look at how to supercharge your vocabulary with bilingual reading. This is a simple solution that will make reading, especially at the beginner levels, easier and fun. These are books that have your target language on the left page and your native language on the right. But how do you use it? Well, it's all in the name. You read a book in two languages at once, the language that you're learning plus the language that you're fluent in. There are a few different formats for bilingual books, but the most common one is the one previously mentioned. You have a book that has your foreign language on one side and your native language on the other. It's also possible to find stories that are presented bilingually, paragraph by paragraph. The principle is the same, but the information is just in more bite-sized chunks, so your eyes need to travel less to read both texts. The great thing about bilingual reading is that you can quickly switch between languages, and the translation is presented to you, so you don't need to try to distinguish between the 10 variants of a word that your dictionary offers, which brings us to the main advantage. Bilingual reading is great for building your initial vocabulary. When you first try reading in a new language, you'll probably find that you need a relatively high level of fluency before you can make a strong connection with the words on the page. Reading is a lot of fun if you already know about 80% of the words, as you can guess the meaning of another 15% from context and then look up the remaining few words you do not understand. But if you're starting out, you might know only 10% of the words. That's where bilingual reading can help a lot. Here's a way to use a bilingual book. Read a sentence first in your target language. See if you understand it. If you do, think about the meaning of some of the key words. Then, quickly glance on the other side of the page and check the translation. This way, you'll be able to have fun reading and learn contextual vocabulary at the same time. Let's look at why it works well if you're learning a language at home. If you're taking language classes, then your teacher sometimes supports you in a similar way to the translated page. When you're reading a text with your teacher, you can ask them questions whenever you do not understand something. They'll give you a translation quickly and can share other ways in which a word can be used. But if you're learning from home, you don't have that advantage. Bilingual reading offers the same benefits as you can quickly check the translation of a sentence and see what each word means. The main goal of bilingual books is to bridge the gap between the beginner and intermediate to more advanced levels. They can help set you up to read real books without any translations. Some language purists might recommend you read only stories that were originally written in your target language, but any book you enjoy is best to encourage your studies. Use bilingual reading to improve your vocabulary and reading comprehension skills until you get so good that you don't need it anymore. It doesn't matter what language you're learning. Bilingual reading works for every language. The principles of language learning don't change, only the implementation does. You also don't really need too much knowledge at the start. If you like a real challenge, then you could even start reading some simple bilingual stories without any prior experience in a language. However, just as with other language programs and courses, the more people who speak a specific language, the easier it'll be to find bilingual books. Why is speaking the number one weakness for most language learners? Some time ago, we sent out a survey to find out a little more about you. We asked about what you like, what you don't like, your strengths and your weaknesses. One question asked you to rate your abilities in listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Over 70% of people surveyed answered that their biggest weakness is speaking. In this video, you'll find out why speaking is a common weakness. You'll also learn six ways you can start improving your speaking skills right now. This is a common issue for language learners. But why is speaking the number one weakness for most learners? It's pretty simple when you consider that you get better at what you focus on. You get better at what you focus on. When people start learning a language, they usually start with reading. Most learners start with textbooks. Learners taking their first class 
probably spend most of their time doing homework and reviewing information in their textbook, spending maybe only 30 minutes a week or so repeating words in class. If you spend most of your time reading, you'll get better at reading, but your speaking skills won't grow. It's like exercising just one muscle. That single muscle will get stronger, but the other ones, which are ignored, stay small. This is why speaking is such a common weakness for learners. If you want to improve your speaking skills, you need to spend more time speaking. Here are six ways you can start right now. Number one, get a native speaker tutor to practice with. A common issue is most people don't have access to teachers or native speakers, or they just don't have the time to meet with one. But with our Premium Plus plan, you get your very own on-site teacher. You can practice speaking by recording yourself and having them review it. One popular tactic is to talk about your day. To do this, send three recordings, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one at night. Your teacher will review your recordings and then give you corrections and feedback. Number two, get conversation-based lessons in the lesson library. If you visit your lesson library, you can sort lessons by conversation, reading, writing, vocab, grammar, or culture. So select conversations and you'll see the lessons that expose you to conversations and get you speaking the language. Number three, read out loud. While you're listening to a lesson and reading along with the notes, try reading out loud. Then reread and speed up your tempo. If you're reading out loud, you're practicing your speaking skills. And by increasing your speed, you'll also be able to talk faster and with confidence. Do this again and again until you can speak faster. Number four, prepare things to say ahead of time. Most learners, especially beginners, run out of things to say. But if you prepare lines ahead of time, you won't have to worry about this. Start speaking with prepared lines from our three-minute video lessons, top 25 questions lessons, survival phrases lessons, and other lessons that you'll find in the lesson library. Number five, shadow conversations. This means you should repeat the dialogues as you hear them. In every lesson, you learn a new conversation. So try to shadow the conversation line by line. Premium and Premium Plus users use the dialogue tool with this method and you'll master conversations faster. Number six, review again and again. Regular review is essential to mastery. Many learners don't review. If you review and repeat lines again and again, you'll speak better, faster, and with more confidence. Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is, how to match your routine to language learning. If you're having a hard time sticking with language learning, then this episode is for you. You'll learn, one, how to map your routine and set your schedule, two, how to choose the learning medium that's right for you, and three, the language tools you'll want for your learning style. If you're having a hard time sticking with language learning, you'll find out how to fix it now. Let's jump into the first part. One, how to map your routine and set your schedule. First, here's a quick question for you. Which of these would you rather have? A, the world's most comprehensive language learning resources, but a weak study routine, or B, a strong study routine and average resources. Leave your answer in the comments. But there is a correct answer here. You want a strong study routine. Why? You can have the best app or textbook in the world, but if you don't use it because you don't have a learning routine or a habit, you won't learn anything. If you have a strong routine and work ethic and just a dictionary and internet access, you'll learn more than someone with the best program and no routine. The point is, we are creatures of routines and habits, and our habits can be used for good or bad. They make us or break us. For example, if you have a bad habit, like going to bed at 4 a.m., you'll always feel tired when you wake up for work or school in the morning. If you have a good habit, like exercising regularly, you'll have energy and good health. Once we have a routine, we tend to stick to it. If it's a bad routine, it can do a lot of damage. But if it's a good routine, it can help us enjoy incredible results. We can also use routines to our advantage by applying them to work toward our goals, like language learning. How do you create a strong language learning routine? Here's one way to do it. First, write down your current daily schedule. For example, 7 a.m. I wake up, 8 a.m. I leave the house, 8.20 to 8.50 I'm on the train, 
9, 10 a.m. I arrive at work, 1 p.m. I go to lunch, and so on. Write out your daily schedule for the whole week. Make it detailed. If you write out your schedule, you can see your existing daily routine. You can see where you can fit language learning into your existing routine, the routine that you're used to, instead of trying to create a new routine. Why does this matter? For example, some people will look at their schedule and see that they wake up at 8 a.m. They think that if they wake up at 7 a.m., they can have an extra hour for language learning. But for many of us, that approach usually doesn't work because it's not something we're used to. You're trying to wake up early so you can learn a language. You're trying to implement two brand new routines that you're not used to. For many people, this results in failure. Even if you do wake up at 7 a.m., will you get out of bed immediately and jump straight to learning every day? Or will you lose motivation after a few days because you miss that hour of sleep? So map out your weekly schedule. Once you understand where your time goes, find an existing part of your routine that you can fit language learning into. For example, if you take the train in the morning, you can use that existing routine and learn some language during that time. If you always eat lunch at 1 p.m., watch a video lesson during your break. If you always cook at 8 p.m., play some audio lessons in the background. If at first you have to start with multitasking, it's better than nothing. You can at least get used to being exposed to the language while you work on dedicating more time and attention to it. Now, let's jump into part two. Two, how to choose the learning medium that's right for you. Before you begin learning, it's important to understand what kind of learner you are. Are you a visual learner or do you learn by reading? There's something called the VARC model, and it's an acronym for four learning styles, visual, auditory or listening, reading, writing, and kinesthetic, meaning hands-on or actual practice and trial and error. You need to understand what kind of learning resources are best for you. So how do you determine what kind of learner you are? This depends on you. Do you like watching videos, listening, reading, or writing? Or do you prefer more hands-on practice? There's no wrong answer. It depends on what kind of learner you are and what you like. Also, think about your past language study experience. Did you remember vocabulary words better when you read them from a book? Or was listening to a podcast more helpful for you? How do you usually remember information best? This helps you choose the learning medium or study tools that are right for you. We'll talk more about this in a few minutes. For now, determine what kind of learner you are. Leave us a comment and let us know. The last thing you need to keep in mind is your study ratio. Your study ratio is how much time you spend absorbing information, input, and how much time you spend producing language, output. What you want to strive for is about 50% input and 50% practice or production, producing that language. So, if you read for 30 minutes, then you want to practice for 30 minutes. You can't just consume, you must practice. Otherwise, it's not going to stick as fast. All right, we've covered routines and learning types. Let's move on to part three. Three, the language tools you'll want for your learning style. In this last part, we're going to cover all the resources that you can take advantage of based on your learning style. But remember, if you're a visual learner, that doesn't mean you should shun resources that don't fit that style. Sometimes it's not practical to watch a video. For example, if you're driving, audio is a much better choice. So let's jump in. If you're a visual learner, take advantage of our video lessons in the lesson library. We have them across all levels, from absolute beginner to advanced. These will be your main source of learning. Use the vocab slideshows. You'll find these on every lesson page and vocab list. The slideshows make it super easy to learn and review words. Just press play and watch. You can put it on a loop and watch for as long as you want. Next, if you're an auditory learner, then take advantage of our audio lessons. You can also use dialogue audio tracks. These give you just the conversation from that lesson. And you can use these tracks to immerse yourself in conversations. Next, if you prefer reading and writing, we include lesson notes and transcripts for every audio and video lesson. So if you're taking a lesson, read along. The lesson notes include extra grammar explanations, vocab lists, and cultural insights that are not available in the lesson. You can also check out our extensive reading books in the lesson library. These are simple one line per page books that will build you into a confident reader. If you prefer writing, you can copy out the lesson dialogue into your notebook. You can leave comments on our lessons with sample sentences. You can keep a daily journal in your target language. Plus, you can send messages to your Premium Plus teacher and practice writing. They'll correct your mistakes, tell you how to express yourself in a natural way, and help you improve fast. 
And finally, if you're a kinesthetic learner and prefer hands-on experience and trial and error, definitely use our Premium Plus teachers and practice with them. You can do that via the My Teacher Messenger on the site or in the app. Use our spaced repetition flashcards. These cards quiz you on words and phrases and help you master them fast. They sort the words for you and quiz you accordingly. So if you don't know a word, you'll keep seeing it over and over until you get it right. And if you do know it, you'll see it again in a few days. It'll pop up every now and then just to refresh your memory. Also, take advantage of our lesson quizzes. You'll find these in every audio lesson, and these test you on the words and phrases you learned in the lessons. You can also practice speaking with our voice recorder. You'll find this inside the dialogue tool. You can record yourself and compare with native speakers. You can keep practicing until you can say the lesson dialogue at a native level. There are tools for every learning style. So, today you learn, one, how to map your routine and set your schedule, two, how to choose the learning medium that's right for you, and three, the language tools you'll want for your learning style. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about the secret to speaking more of your target language. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Starting easy with language learning is sometimes the best way to get into a new language. But before you feel guilty about wanting to learn the easy way, don't worry. It's fine to start the easy way. You wouldn't expect to lift 200 pounds on your first day at the gym, right? And language is no different. Start easy so you can build up to tackling greater challenges later. In this video, we'll explore seven easy ways to learn a language. The reason it's okay to start easy is the same as the reason you should start easy in the gym. You just can't expect to lift 200 pounds on day one. You start with five pounds, then you move up to 10, 15, 20. And language is the same way. Learn a few phrases today, a basic conversation tomorrow. In a few weeks, you'll be able to speak for up to three minutes in your target language. Then you'll reach five, then 10, then 20 minutes. Success comes step by step, little by little. So it's important to make things that are easy to do and easy to continue part of your routine. If you try to study for two hours a day with nothing but a big textbook, you may overwhelm yourself, get discouraged, and get tired. You might not stick with it because it's too hard to do. Things that are easy to do are easy to continue. So here are some resources to help you learn language the easy way. Number one, take audio and video lessons. Listening to audio and watching video lessons is an easy way to consume language. Most of our lessons are five minutes on average, so you don't have to spend too much time at the computer. You can even learn on our app while you're commuting, working around the house, or out on a walk. Number two, take lessons with Alexa. If you own an Amazon Echo, Dot, or Show, or are planning to get one, you'll want to make sure to download some apps to help you learn your target language. Take a look through the Amazon Skill Store. You can listen to lessons and other audio materials actively or passively, whenever the time is right for you. Number three, download the lesson dialogues and immerse yourself. With every audio lesson, you get a dialogue track, just the lesson conversation. These are just five to 20 seconds long. When you finish a lesson, download the track. Make a playlist of all of them. Then play them and immerse yourself in the language. Number four, the word of the day. This will take you a minute or less. Sign up for our free word of the day email lessons. It'll be a small boost to your vocabulary every day. Number five, vocab slideshows. You can access vocabulary slideshows on any audio lesson or vocab list. Just press play and watch the slideshow. That's it. This is a fast and easy way to review words from a lesson. You can even put the slideshow on loop to review as much as you want. Number six, the Daily Dose of Language app. This app is for the iPhone, iPad, and Android. With this bonus app, you'll get daily mini lessons covering phrases, grammar, culture, holidays, slang, and more. Every day is something new. Plus, these lessons will take you just a minute or two to complete. Number seven, print out our lessons as physical study material. 
You might be wondering why you should bother to print anything if all the lesson content is already online. But if you have the material sitting right in front of you, it's a lot easier to just glance through and start learning. With our Word Bank Study Tool, you can create your own word and phrase lists and print them out. Reviewing takes just a few minutes. You can also print out the lesson notes that come with every audio and video lesson. You'll also find our extensive reading books, which will help you to read faster. You'll find these in the lesson library. What's your reason for learning a language? Is it a personal goal, a hobby, or do you have dreams of living in a country where it's spoken? In this video, you'll discover 10 reasons people learn languages. You'll also learn why knowing and sharing your reason is important to succeeding in your learning. What's your reason for learning a language? Whatever your reason is, whether big or small, knowing it and talking about it is important. More often than not, your reason for learning a language is directly related to your long-term goal for the language. Your reason for learning might be, I want to live in the country where the language is spoken, or I want to understand the culture, movies, and music. But it can also be something simple, like I'm just interested in it. The point is, if you know your reason, you'll always remember what got you started in the first place. As a result, you'll maintain your motivation and continue your studies. But what about sharing your reason with others? This doesn't mean bragging about your goals and saying things like, I'll be fluent in 10 months. Rather, I'm learning because, and sharing something specific to you, real reasons. When you talk about your reason for learning with others, you remind yourself indirectly. And the more you think about it, the more likely you are to do it. Plus, you set an expectation. By sharing your goals and your reasons for learning, your friends see you as someone who's actively learning a language, and that's another powerful motivator. Also, talking about it gives you confidence, the knowledge that you can and will learn the language. A lot of people think they can't learn a language. They think they don't have the time for it or the talent for it. In reality, you just need to start. By sharing your reason, you can convince yourself that you can do it. So, what's your reason for learning? Leave a comment and tell us why you started learning a new language. So, why are other language learners studying? We asked. Here are the top 10 reasons for learning a language. Number one, I love the culture and the people who speak the language. This is a popular answer, especially among our learners studying Japanese and Korean. Number two, I want to understand songs, movies, and TV shows. Songs, movies, and TV shows are great ways to immerse yourself in the language. If you're spending your time learning and immersing yourself, you're going to learn faster. Number three, it's a beautiful language. Sometimes people simply love the way the language sounds. This is a simple answer, but even this can keep you motivated if your interest in the language is genuine. Number four, my family comes from a place where the language is spoken. Of course, people want to be able to connect to their family and the people they love. Speaking of... Number five, I want to speak to my partner's family in their language. This can be a great way to connect with people and learn more about them, especially if they're new family. Number six, I'm learning the language to impress someone. Maybe you want to show off to someone special, or maybe surprise a grandparent with a card in their native language. There are a variety of situations in which using another language can show someone you care. Number seven, I love traveling. Knowing the local language when you travel will help you find new places and make new connections. It can only make your travel experience better. Number eight, I live or want to live in a country that speaks the language. It's a lot of people's dream to live overseas and experience the culture they love. Or maybe they need to move for work or family reasons. Learning the local language is extremely important if you're going to live in a different country. Number nine, I just love learning languages. What's great about this is if you've learned one language, it's easier to learn another because you learn how to learn a language, right? If you learn one, you develop certain habits and approaches that work for you. You can use this to master another. Number 10, it's just a personal goal. We hear this a lot, especially from learners that stopped, took a break, and came back. If you have a goal in mind, something you wanted to do but never did, you want to come back to it and get it done. Our results show that most people learn for love, for family, to travel, or for self-improvement. So why are you learning? Leave us a comment right now and let us know. Did you have a language teacher that inspired you? Maybe it wasn't a teacher, but a partner or another person someone that motivated you to learn. 
you wanted to reward their investment in you by doing well. When learning a new language, having encouragement and the help of a good teacher can be hugely important to succeeding in your studies. In this video, we'll look at the power of a good teacher. Teachers can have a powerful impact on you, so let's look at how great teachers help you during your language learning journey. Number one, a good teacher can push you to improve your speaking. Working on building your conversation skills can be tough, whether you're practicing a one-minute conversation or a 10-minute conversation, having a good teacher to practice with is key. You can prepare for your conversations by creating an outline of things to cover on paper. Then, as you talk, you can follow along with the topics you've prepared. These topics can include basic things like greetings, asking about the other person, or just catching up. Because all of the things you're going to talk about have been prepared before you begin the conversation, you can move down the list and practice different stages of conversation. Something as simple as greeting someone and catching up with them can be two to three minutes of talking. Having a good teacher to help you make this outline and go through it with you can really improve your speaking. A good teacher will also be able to handle going off script too. When a conversation goes outside the originally planned outline, a good teacher can react smoothly and keep the conversation going. If you want to make a joke or change the subject, the teacher can follow along. They can react and continue the conversation with you easily. If a teacher shuts down a student when they're trying something new, it can really hurt the student's motivation and enthusiasm. But the right teacher can motivate you to get better, even if your speaking isn't always perfect. The key is finding someone who can take a student's new skills and encourage them, even if they're not correct 100% of the time. Number two, how you can learn faster with outside help. After studying on your own for some time, introducing outside support can be a game changer for your long-term motivation. It can push you to reach new limits and work harder than ever. It can be a teacher, a tutor, a family member, a friend, or someone you look up to. But it has to be someone that inspires and energizes you. Of course, finding people like this is easier said than done. So you might want to take a few trial lessons with a few teachers to find the one you're the best fit with. If you're a Premium Plus user, take advantage of your Premium Plus teachers. They will hold you accountable, send you assignments, and give you feedback to help you perfect your language skills. It's also important to find a teacher whose lessons you enjoy. Sometimes people stick with lessons just because they like the instructor. There are so many types of teachers. If you can find instructors you gravitate towards, you may find you'll want to learn more just because of who they are. Make sure to check out our lesson library. There are a ton of classes and teachers to choose from in the absolute beginner, beginner, and intermediate levels. If you hear someone you like, you'll be more likely to stick with their lessons, and you'll learn better. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the secret to speaking more of your target language. If you're like most language learners, then above all, you want to speak and understand more of your target language, right? Well, keep watching. You'll learn how to prepare ahead of time to speak more, how to put this tactic to use with our learning program, and how to get free cheat sheets that'll get you speaking more. The secret to speaking more of your target language. If you're like most language learners, then above all, you want to speak and understand more of your target language. But how do you speak more when you're just starting out, when you can't yet create sentences off the top of your head? Here are some tips. Let's jump into part one, how to prepare ahead of time to speak more. So what's the secret to speaking more of your target language? It's something called preparation. And believe it or not, you've likely used it if you've ever had to give a speech or a presentation. So what do we mean by preparation? Imagine that you have to go open a bank account in the language that you're learning. How would you do it? You can go in there, grunt, and use body language, or you can first come up with a list of words and phrases you need to know before you go, like debit card, bank account, I want to open a bank account, and minimum balance. You may want to look up the grammar rules for how to say, I want to. Once you know these words and phrases, you translate them into your target language and you go over to the bank to open an account. 
Or let's say you're meeting a person for the first time. What are some things you'd say to them? Things like, what's your name? My name is, where are you from? I am from, and so on. So you prepare a list of words and phrases, all the things you'd want to say in that situation. You translate them ahead of time so that you can communicate effectively. That's preparation. And preparation works because most conversations are predictable to a degree. For example, most conversations with friends start with greetings and catching up on how you've been. And if you know the lines for greetings, catching up, and talking about your weekend, then you can easily handle such a conversation. The point is, the more you prepare, the more you learn to speak without needing a teacher. So how do you prepare? Part two, how to speak more through preparation. Here are some tips. If you're using our learning program, one, take our audio and video lessons. You'll find these in our lesson library and just focus on the conversational lessons. Lessons are just three to 15 minutes in length and in the first minute, you'll hear a practical conversation. For example, meeting someone new, catching up with a friend or ordering at a restaurant. Then our teachers break down and explain every word and grammar rule. So you can learn these lines and conversations ahead of time. Number two, download the audio dialogue track. This gives you just the conversation. So when you finish a lesson, download it for easy review. Then make a playlist out of all of them and play the conversations on repeat. This will make them much easier to remember. Number three, save the lesson notes. The lesson notes give you the lesson in writing, so you can read the lesson dialogue, the grammar explanations, and cultural insights for every lesson. Download and keep the notes for conversations you think are useful. For example, if you want to talk about the weather and you took a lesson on that, then download the lesson notes for that lesson. Now, if you're looking to prepare ahead of time for specific topics, then do this next one. Number four, use our free PDF conversation cheat sheets. These conversation cheat sheets teach you words and phrases for all kinds of common conversation topics, like weather, hobbies, family, plans, and much more. You can prepare for the most common conversations with these cheat sheets. If you want to access our free conversation cheat sheets, leave a comment down below and we'll give you the link. Number five, look up lesson topics in our lesson library. If you want to open a bank account or eat at a certain restaurant and you don't know how to talk about these topics, find a lesson about it in our lesson library. Number six, if you're a Premium Plus user, simply ask your teacher to point you to lessons for certain topics, or even better, ask them for potential lines, and you can even practice speaking. Just record yourself, send it in, and your teacher will provide you feedback on what to say and how. Number seven, do it the old school way. Sit down, think of a topic you wanna to talk about. Make a list of all the words you think you need, all the phrases you wanna say or may hear in that conversation. Then translate those words and phrases into your target language. So let's recap. Most conversations are predictable. You can prepare ahead of time by thinking of all the words and lines you'll need for various conversations. And you can prepare with one, our audio and video lessons, two, conversation tracks, three, lesson notes, four, free PDF cheat sheets, five, by looking up specific topics in the lesson library, six, asking your Premium Plus teacher, and seven, by manually coming up with a list of the words and phrases and translating them. Everyone can find five minutes to spare somewhere in their day. Why not use that time to learn a language? In five minutes, you can jump into a new lesson, vocabulary list, or grammar point. Let's look at the concept of the five minute rule. It's a simple idea that can help you be more successful in your language learning. In this video, you'll learn about the five minute rule and how it can help you master a language in the long run. Point one, the five minute rule can help you put your time to better use. Have you ever caught yourself falling down a YouTube hole? Or have you ever looked up from a simple phone game and realized you've been playing for 30 minutes? Of course you have. We have all had this experience at some point. The idea with the five minute rule is that you take some of that time you might be spending on something not so productive and turn just five minutes into time you spend learning language. You can even do this on your phone with our app. Our audio and video lessons are three to 15 minutes long, so it's easy to spend five minutes on a lesson. You can also review vocabulary and phrase lists, review the word of the day, or drill words with flashcards for five minutes. There are a ton of ways to study. You just need to sit down for five minutes and do it. There's no need to stress about how to fill hours of study time. Point two, 
The five minute rule can help you take advantage of bite-sized learning. Why is it a five minute rule? What's so special about this amount of time? Before we answer this question, imagine your typical day. You wake up in the morning and go to work or school. You finish in the evening and come home. You want to study, but you think about spending hours of your limited free time on learning and you lose motivation. If, however, at the end of a long day, you come home and think about spending just five minutes studying, it becomes much easier to motivate yourself, and you're much more likely to actually do it. Expecting yourself to spend hours of each day studying after going to work or attending school can make you burn out quickly. You might be able to keep it up for a short period of time, but for many people, the amount of pressure they put on themselves causes them to lose motivation and stop completely. Five minutes, however, is easy to keep up with every day. You won't dread spending five minutes of your free time on your studies. And you'll probably find that once you start, you'll study for longer than just five minutes. Breaking your studies into small pieces can help you jump in whenever you feel like it. There's one simple study tool that will help you speak more of your target language. It'll help you understand entire conversations and catch every single word. It'll also help you respond in conversations. The tool is the Dialogue Study Tool. It'll help you with all of this and will help you improve your reading and writing skills. In this video, we'll look at how the Dialogue Study Tool can aid your language learning. Number one, what is the Dialogue Study Tool? The Dialogue Study Tool is a premium study tool that you can find in every lesson. The Dialogue Tool is a line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversations in your lessons. You get the dialogue script in the target language. You get the romanized version, the translated script, audio pronunciations, and access to a voice recorder for each line. Number two, why is the tool so powerful? For example, let's look at how you can use it to improve your speaking skills. When you listen to a lesson, use the dialogue to read along. As you listen, speak out loud along with the lesson. Repeat what you hear. The dialogue tool makes mastering conversations super easy. It breaks down the lesson conversations one line at a time. You can use it to make sure you understand every line, phrase, and word without getting overwhelmed. And you can also use it to perfect your speaking, reading, listening, and writing skills. If you're not sure about how to say something, you can click on the audio icon next to the line to hear it spoken by a native speaker. Then repeat out loud. You can do this as many times as you want. To perfect your pronunciation, click on the microphone icon to start recording. Record yourself saying a line and compare your pronunciation to the pronunciation of a native speaker. These tactics will get you speaking in minutes, and if you apply these to every lesson, you'll be speaking your target language in no time. But what about listening? Since the dialogue is a line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation, you can listen to each line separately, as much as you want. Just click on the audio icon. You can listen again and again and review the script. Read along with the script so you can catch every word. This will help you understand fast, native-level conversations without missing anything. Reading is another skill to improve with the dialogue tool. As you listen to the conversation, just read along with the lesson script that's inside the lesson dialogue. If you don't know a word, click the translations that are in the dialogue. You can even read with the Romanized script to help you sound out the words. Lastly, let's talk about how it can help boost writing skills. This is a very simple, basic suggestion. Just write the dialogue down in a notebook, by hand. Just writing down the dialogue provided gives you a chance to practice using letters or words you might never have written before. This is especially true if you're studying a language that uses an alphabet or script you're unfamiliar with. Another benefit is that it gives you things to write. Instead of taking time to think about what to write, you can just write the dialogue down. The dialogue tool can support your studies in many different ways, and this makes it a powerful aid for your language learning. There might be times in your life when you need to learn something right away. Maybe you have an unexpected exam, you need to prepare for a new job, or you might be traveling for work. In situations like these, many people feel the need to try to study a lot of information in a short period of time. But can you really learn a language by cramming in all of your studying in a short period? In this video, we'll talk about how cramming works with language learning. One, is cramming effective? A lot of people would probably answer yes to this question based on experiences they had in school. 
Most of us have probably had the experience of staying up late the night before a test to cram as much information as possible. But how much of that information do you remember now? Cramming can work if you have a test tomorrow or a short-term study goal. For example, if your only goal is to pass a test or give a presentation within a few days, cramming isn't a bad idea. But it doesn't work very well if you want to remember what you've studied in the long run. A great example of a better way to study is with something like our space repetition flashcards. One of the most effective ways to study is to review something over a period of time. Spacing out your studies is what helps you learn and retain information best. You learn something today, you come back in two days and review it. Then, you come back in four days and review it some more. In contrast, cramming is a one-time thing. You cram a lot of information in your brain, take a test, and then forget it all. But when you review, you're strengthening the synapses in your brain. Synapses are like little roads that connect the neurons in your brain. So the more you review, the stronger the connection and the better the recall. But what if you need to learn fast? Two, an example of a cramming schedule. Let's say you're traveling for work and you really need to learn some greetings and some basic survival phrases to make it through your trip. Time is probably not on your side. Your only option is to cram. Here's what a cram plan might look like in a case like this. Spend some time on survival lessons before going to bed. Increase the amount of time you spend with anyone you can talk to in your target language, another student or maybe an online teacher. Increase the amount of time you spend on any online language classes you're taking. Another problem related to cramming is that your study time has to come from somewhere, and that tends to come from sleep, so that's not a good thing. We don't recommend cramming, but if you have to cram, which we all do at some point, here are some ideas for how to do it. Three, cramming learning program. Cramming might get you a lot of fast results in a short period of time, but with just a couple of one-time study sessions, it's a strategy that won't help you in the long run. If you find yourself in a situation where you absolutely have to cram, here's what you can do. First, pick the lessons that align with your goal. Focus on just what you need. If you're learning for travel, skip the other lessons and focus on our survival phrases series. If you want to learn basic conversations, look at the top 25 questions you need to know content. If you need special phrases for the bank or the post office, we have lessons for that too. And you can find lessons for all kinds of topics and scenarios in the lesson library. Second, prioritize lessons at your level more than the challenging lessons. If you're working within a limited time frame, you'll get more value for your time by doing lessons that are at your level. You can spend more time on the harder lessons later if you find you have the time. We have a vocabulary slideshow tool and a flashcard tool that you can use for quick study sessions. Both of these features quiz you on vocab and help you learn fast. Focus on mastering a few must-know lessons. It's better to know all of the dialogue from five lessons inside out than to run through 60 lessons and not remember anything. You can also take advantage of our lesson notes. Inside the lesson notes, you'll get the lesson dialogue, translations, explanations, sample sentences, and cultural insights. We have a printer-friendly version of the word bank too. Just click on that to create a printout. It'll give you a physical study sheet you can use to review anywhere. You can also print out PDF conversation cheat sheets and infographics. These teach you the must-know words and phrases for all kinds of topics. Travel, basic conversations, talking about hobbies, airport vocab, and much more. With the infographics, you can save the images to your phone and just swipe through them for a quick review. And finally, when you're ready, do a quiz session. Even if you're low on time, a bit of review can help. After you're done with a lesson, stop and ask yourself, what was the main grammar point of the lesson? Try and explain that rule to yourself in your head, or say it out loud. Remember, we don't recommend cramming as the best method for learning a language. The key to building skills is repetition. But if you need a quick study session to learn a few key points in your target language, we have the tools to help you. When you're ready to come back and review what you've crammed, we can help you with that too. You've studied for a while and are ready to talk to people and practice what you've learned, but where do you start? Starting a conversation in a new language can seem a bit intimidating. How do you just jump into it? In this video, we'll look at five ways to start conversations. Number one, introduce yourself in your target language. This is usually one of the first things you learn when you start studying a new language. And sometimes starting a conversation or continuing one is as simple as introducing yourself. Number two, talking about the weather. 
This is a universal talking point. People talk about the weather all over the world. And just saying, it's really nice today, is enough to start a conversation. A great way to practice your weather conversation skills is to check out our can-do lesson pathway. This series of lessons teaches you how to talk about the weather in your target language. Number three, give compliments. Compliments are a great way to start a conversation. You can compliment something about your conversation partner's city, country, or something specific to them personally. Hey, your bag is super cute, or that ice cream looks delicious. These kinds of compliments can lead to further conversation about what you complimented. In this case, it could be fashion or a local restaurant. This is a great way to make quick connections with people. Number four, ask for help. For example, you can ask for directions, ask about prices, or request recommendations for restaurants or shopping spots, and let the conversation go from there. People are usually happy to lend a helping hand to tourists who are visiting their city. Number five, learn phrases for transactions. This can include getting a room at a hotel or telling a taxi driver where to go. When you're traveling overseas, you'll need to talk to other people in your target language. And while this might be a bit scary at first, you'll find that the people you meet are just happy that you're trying to communicate with them. So get started talking in your target language now. Hey everyone, welcome to The Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the secret to speaking more of your target language. If you're like most language learners, then above all, you want to speak and understand more of your target language, right? Well, keep watching. You'll learn how to prepare ahead of time to speak more, how to put this tactic to use with our learning program, and how to get free cheat sheets that'll get you speaking more. The secret to speaking more of your target language. If you're like most language learners, then above all, you want to speak and understand more of your target language. But how do you speak more when you're just starting out, when you can't yet create sentences off the top of your head? Here are some tips. Let's jump into part one, how to prepare ahead of time to speak more. So what's the secret to speaking more of your target language? It's something called preparation. And believe it or not, you've likely used it if you've ever had to give a speech or a presentation. So what do we mean by preparation? Imagine that you have to go open a bank account in the language that you're learning. How would you do it? You can go in there, grunt, and use body language, or you can first come up with a list of words and phrases you need to know before you go, like debit card, bank account, I want to open a bank account, and minimum balance. You may want to look up the grammar rules for how to say, I want to. Once you know these words and phrases, you translate them into your target language and you go over to the bank to open an account. Or let's say you're meeting a person for the first time. What are some things you'd say to them? Things like, what's your name? My name is, where are you from? I am from, and so on. So you prepare a list of words and phrases, all the things you'd want to say in that situation. You translate them ahead of time so that you can communicate effectively. That's preparation. And preparation works because most conversations are predictable to a degree. For example, most conversations with friends start with greetings and catching up on how you've been. And if you know the lines for greetings, catching up, and talking about your weekend, then you can easily handle such a conversation. The point is, the more you prepare, the more you learn to speak without needing a teacher. So how do you prepare? Part two, how to speak more through preparation. Here are some tips. If you're using our learning program, one, take our audio and video lessons. You'll find these in our lesson library and just focus on the conversational lessons. Lessons are just three to 15 minutes in length and in the first minute, you'll hear a practical conversation. For example, meeting someone new, catching up with a friend or ordering at a restaurant. Then our teachers break down and explain every word and grammar rule. So you can learn these lines and conversations ahead of time. Number two, download the audio dialogue track. This gives you just the conversation. So when you finish a lesson, download it for easy review. Then make a playlist out of all of them and play the conversations on repeat. This will make them much easier to remember. Number three, save the lesson notes. 
The lesson notes give you the lesson in writing, so you can read the lesson dialogue, the grammar explanations, and cultural insights for every lesson. Download and keep the notes for conversations you think are useful. For example, if you want to talk about the weather and you took a lesson on that, then download the lesson notes for that lesson. Now, if you're looking to prepare ahead of time for specific topics, then do this next one. Number four, use our free PDF conversation cheat sheets. These conversation cheat sheets teach you words and phrases for all kinds of common conversation topics, like weather, hobbies, family, plans, and much more. You can prepare for the most common conversations with these cheat sheets. If you want to access our free conversation cheat sheets, leave a comment down below and we'll give you the link. Number five, look up lesson topics in our lesson library. If you want to open a bank account or eat at a certain restaurant and you don't know how to talk about these topics, find a lesson about it in our lesson library. Number six, if you're a Premium Plus user, simply ask your teacher to point you to lessons for certain topics, or even better, ask them for potential lines, and you can even practice speaking. Just record yourself, send it in, and your teacher will provide you feedback on what to say and how. Number seven, do it the old school way. Sit down, think of a topic you wanna to talk about. Make a list of all the words you think you need, all the phrases you wanna say or may hear in that conversation. Then, translate those words and phrases into your target language. So let's recap. Most conversations are predictable. You can prepare ahead of time by thinking of all the words and lines you'll need for various conversations. And you can prepare with, one, our audio and video lessons, two, conversation tracks, three, lesson notes, four, free PDF cheat sheets, five, by looking up specific topics in the lesson library, six, asking your Premium Plus teacher, and seven, by manually coming up with a list of the words and phrases and translating them. Starting easy with language learning is sometimes the best way to get into a new language. But before you feel guilty about wanting to learn the easy way, don't worry. It's fine to start the easy way. You wouldn't expect to lift 200 pounds on your first day at the gym, right? And language is no different. Start easy so you can build up to tackling greater challenges later. In this video, we'll explore seven easy ways to learn a language. The reason it's okay to start easy is the same as the reason you should start easy in the gym. You just can't expect to lift 200 pounds on day one. You start with five pounds, then you move up to 10, 15, 20. And language is the same way. Learn a few phrases today, a basic conversation tomorrow. In a few weeks, you'll be able to speak for up to three minutes in your target language. Then you'll reach five, then 10, then 20 minutes. Success comes step by step, little by little. So it's important to make things that are easy to do and easy to continue part of your routine. If you try to study for two hours a day with nothing but a big textbook, you may overwhelm yourself, get discouraged and get tired. You might not stick with it because it's too hard to do. Things that are easy to do are easy to continue. So here are some resources to help you learn language the easy way. Number one, take audio and video lessons. Listening to audio and watching video lessons is an easy way to consume language. Most of our lessons are five minutes on average, so you don't have to spend too much time at the computer. You can even learn on our app while you're commuting, working around the house, or out on a walk. Number two, take lessons with Alexa. If you own an Amazon Echo, Dot, or Show, or are planning to get one, you'll want to make sure to download some apps to help you learn your target language. Take a look through the Amazon Skill Store. You can listen to lessons and other audio materials actively or passively, whenever the time is right for you. Number three, download the lesson dialogues and immerse yourself. With every audio lesson, you get a dialogue track, just the lesson conversation. These are just five to 20 seconds long. When you finish a lesson, download the track. Make a playlist of all of them. Then play them and immerse yourself in the language. Number four, the word of the day. This will take you a minute or less. Sign up for our free word of the day email lessons. It'll be a small boost to your vocabulary every day. Number five, vocab slideshows. You can access vocabulary slideshows on any audio lesson or vocab list. Just press play and watch the slideshow. That's it. This is a fast and easy way to review words from a lesson. You can even put the slideshow on loop to review as much as you want. Number six, the Daily Dose of Language app. 
This app is for the iPhone, iPad, and Android. With this bonus app, you'll get daily mini lessons covering phrases, grammar, culture, holidays, slang, and more. Every day is something new. Plus, these lessons will take you just a minute or two to complete. Number seven, print out our lessons as physical study material. You might be wondering why you should bother to print anything if all the lesson content is already online. But if you have the material sitting right in front of you, it's a lot easier to just glance through and start learning. With our Word Bank Study Tool, you can create your own word and phrase lists and print them out. Reviewing takes just a few minutes. You can also print out the lesson notes that come with every audio and video lesson. You'll also find our extensive reading books, which will help you to read faster. You'll find these in the lesson library. Are you afraid of making mistakes in your target language? Afraid you'll never ever be able to have a conversation or give a presentation? Or maybe you're afraid of something else? In this video, we'll cover four fears related to language learning and how to overcome them. The first one is, I'm afraid I'm not good enough to speak. I freeze. Do you feel like you're not good enough to speak yet? A lot of people can relate to this one. Probably all language learners have felt this at some point. It's a pretty common fear. Here are some tips to overcome it. First, speak from day one. The best way to get good at speaking is to practice speaking. If you're holding yourself back because you think you're not good enough, you're making a mistake. That's exactly why you're not improving. You need to open your mouth and start talking. Second, if you're not sure what to say to start speaking, consider practicing with existing dialogues. In our lessons, you get scripts for introducing yourself, making small talk, ordering food, expressing opinions, and much more. If you're looking for some things to use for speaking practice, the lessons will give you the exact lines and conversations. Our third tip, learn with your own teacher with our Premium Plus plan. With Premium Plus, you get an actual native speaker teacher to tell you what to say and how to say it. You can actually learn to speak with the help of a real native teacher. Fear number two is, I'm afraid I'll never be fluent. This is a common fear for beginner learners. Once you start improving and seeing progress, this goes away. When you're just starting out with a new language, fluency can feel like an impossible goal. There are so many new things to learn and so many methods you can use. It's easy to get overwhelmed with all the options, but you can't let yourself fall into that trap. The longer you keep at it, the better your language skills will become. And slowly, you'll stop worrying about fluency. What's important is that you put in time and continue working on moving forward. So, how do you overcome worries about never becoming fluent? How do you motivate yourself to continue? First, set small, specific goals instead of just saying, I want to become fluent. How do you know when you've become fluent? Fluency is hard to determine. Instead of creating a vague, hard to understand goal for yourself, focus on working towards smaller goals. For example, set goals like being able to introduce yourself or having a five minute conversation. Something you can measure so you'll know when you've reached it. Fluency can be difficult to measure. If you set goals that you can measure, you can track your progress. This helps keep your motivation up over time. The third fear is, I'm afraid I'm not actually learning or making progress. If you're afraid you're not making progress, there are a few things you can do right now. First of all, review. A lot of people hear a new phrase once and think they'll remember it, but that usually doesn't happen. So when they forget what they've learned, they get worried that they're not learning or that the lessons don't work. But the truth is, you have to review again and again to truly master something. Second, use the dashboard to track your progress. If numbers and data are helpful for you as you track your learning, check out our dashboard. It tracks your progress and gives you dynamic reports. Third, try a harder lesson on the site. You might not understand it all at first, and that's okay. You'll be able to after some study. All lessons come with line-by-line -line translations and our teachers explain every single word. Break down these harder lessons. If you have to work a little more slowly, it's okay. When you finish the lesson, you can be sure of your progress because you'll be able to understand something you didn't understand a few minutes earlier. Fourth, learn one-on-one -on -one with a teacher with our Premium Plus plan. They will personally review your writing and your speaking and will fix your mistakes. Getting regular feedback from a native speaker is a great way to know if you're making progress. It's such a great feeling to hear a native speaker tell you, wow, you're getting good. 
The fourth fear is, I'm afraid of not understanding anything I hear. This is very common. You hear advanced grammar and vocabulary and it goes completely over your head. You have no idea what you've just heard. Here are some tips for working on this issue. If you're taking an advanced lesson, read along with the script. Reading along with our line-by-line -line dialogue is the best way to improve your understanding of advanced conversations. If you're in a real-life situation, the solution is quite simple. Learn useful phrases like, excuse me, can you say it again slower? Or, can you say it in simpler words? Or even just, I don't understand. There's nothing wrong with saying that you didn't understand something or asking for help. These are some common fears for most language learners, and we hope these tips help you. Is there anything else that you're afraid of when it comes to learning another language? Let us know in the comments, and maybe we can share some suggestions for how to overcome them. Hey everyone, welcome to The Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is five ways to make sure you start on the right foot with language learning. Ever wondered if you're on the right path with your language learning or if you're studying the right things and taking the right steps? Well, today you'll learn how to start on the right foot with your language learning journey. We'll talk about one, why you must know your reason for learning the language, two, how to set fail-proof goals and rewards, three, how to match your daily routine to your learning so that you don't struggle with the actual learning, four, why you need anchor points for long-term motivation, and five, how to improve faster with ongoing assessment. How to start off on the right foot with your language learning journey. There are five things you, as a language learner, need to address if you want to start off on the right foot. Here they are. One, your reason for learning. Two, your goal and reward. Three, matching your routine to your medium. Four, anchor points. And five, assessment. If you get these squared away in your first month, you'll be set up to succeed with any language goal you set. And today, we'll walk you through each point. The first one, your reason for learning. Why are you learning the language? So why is thinking about your why so important? Here's an example. Think back to when you were a kid and you were trying to save money. What was the first thing you wanted to buy and how much did it cost? You probably still remember what it was and how much it cost. And because you knew the specific price, you were able to save up for it. If not, at the very least, you made more progress than if you just said, I want to save money with no specific purpose in mind. And that's the thing. If you know precisely why you're doing something, it's easy to tie a goal to it. And there are all kinds of reasons to learn a language. There's travel, family, friends, love, or maybe you're living in a country that speaks it. So knowing your reason clarifies your mission and gives you motivation from the start. Now, some reasons are stronger than others. For example, living in a country that speaks the language is a powerful reason. You need it for survival. If your reason for learning is something simpler, like, I just want to watch TV in that language, it's not exactly something you need to survive. Does it matter whether you have a strong reason or not? Not necessarily. Strong reasons help with motivation initially, but people with strong reasons can and do fail, and people with weak reasons succeed. It's all up to the individual. But the point is, you need to know why you're doing this, and that's enough for you to take the first step. The second point, goals and rewards. Once you've clarified your reason, it's time to set your goals. If you want to succeed, your goal can't just be, I want to be fluent one day. Why? Because this tells you nothing about how you'll achieve it or when you'll reach fluency. It's too vague. Your goal needs to be small, measurable, realistic, and have a deadline. So you can clearly see the steps you need to take to reach your goal. Instead of saying, I want to be fluent one day, which you can't measure and can't precisely determine, aim for, for example, 30 words or one minute of conversation. You can measure these goals. If you have a deadline like by next month, you know your time frame. And unlike a goal like I want to be fluent, a goal like I want to be able to talk for one minute is much more realistic. Now, what about rewards? Now that you've set a goal, you need to tie rewards to your goal. Why rewards? 
Shouldn't you work hard first and worry about rewards later? Because rewards are powerful motivators, you should be working hard. But hard work often is not fun, and you need something to push you through. When you come home after a long day of work on a rainy day, soaking wet, the last thing you want to do is open a book and start studying. It's so much easier to turn on Netflix or something. But having that reward reminds you, if I achieve this, then I get that. So defining what's in it for me, what do I get, boosts your motivation. You have something to look forward to and get you through times when you don't feel like doing work. The third point is, match your routine to the study medium. Once you have your goals and rewards, you need to fit your language learning into your current life and daily routine. How? Sit down and write out your daily schedule for every day of the week. For example, wake up at 7 a.m., breakfast at 8 a.m., get on the bus at 9 a.m., work from 9.30 a.m., lunch at 1 p.m., and so on. Do this for every day of the week. That way, you can see where you can fit in learning. For example, if you ride the bus in the morning, you can use that time to listen to our audio lessons. Why do this? Well, language learning is a brand new routine. If you don't work from your existing daily routines, it may not work out. For example, if you decide to wake up an hour earlier to study, now you're adding two new routines, waking up earlier and learning a language at once. One is hard enough, but two makes it even harder. You may not wake up on time. You may not get out of bed. You may fall right back to sleep. The point here is you should piggyback off of your existing routines and use a learning medium that matches your routine. So instead of waking up earlier, keep your daily routine, but look for another way to introduce language learning. Write out your daily routine, see where you spend your time, and then match your routine to learning. If you take walks and listen to music, swap out music for language lessons and listen along. If you take the bus or train, check out our audio and video lessons. If you usually read in the evenings and can focus, try using a textbook. In all of these examples, you're taking an existing routine and adding language learning inside. The fourth point is set anchor points. Anchor points are the connections you make to a language that boost your motivation and keep you attached or anchored to your goal so you don't slip away. So what's an example of an anchor point? For example, if you have friends or relatives that speak the language, and if you're around them and you're exposed to the language, you're more likely to learn. Same thing with watching TV shows in the target language. You're exposed to it more, so your interest in learning naturally goes up. Also, investing in a textbook or learning program, signing up for classes or for a proficiency test. All of these are anchor points that connect you back to the language. Why do you need anchor points? Oftentimes, your initial reason for learning the language isn't as motivating as it used to be. Maybe you were motivated in month one, but not in month five. That's why people with strong reasons might fail. So an anchor point gives you another reason to keep going and boost your motivation. And also, oftentimes, the reason we start isn't the same as the reason we continue. Anchor points are not something you need to worry about in your first month of learning, but adding them in the second month and afterward will help you keep going. Can you think of any anchor points you can add? Leave a comment. Finally, the fifth point is you need assessment. Now that you have goals, rewards, a routine, and anchor points, it's not enough to learn a language alone in a vacuum. You need feedback and course correction from a native speaker. With our learning program, you can learn with your very own teacher. You can also leave comments on lessons and get answers from the others. Or you can find a tutor of your own, someone that will assess your progress and correct you as needed. So, let's recap. There are five things you, as a language learner, need to address if you want to start off on the right foot. One, clarify your reason for learning. Two, set goals and rewards. Three, match your routine with your study medium. Four, set anchor points. And five, get ongoing assessment. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to deal with missed language goals and failure. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Want to cut your language studying time in half? 
In this video, you'll discover how learning a language using PDF lessons is convenient, efficient, and can help you cut your studying time nearly in half. Many people give up on their dream of learning a second language because traditional classroom instruction is too much of a hassle. Between getting to class, studying on someone else's schedule, and just the sheer expense of the book's intuition, traditional learning can be tough. Many people simply give up. Online classes are an option, but sometimes limited data plans can derail the dream of learning a new language. Fortunately, there is a solution, learning language using PDF lesson notes. Let's take a closer look at how studying language lessons in PDF format can help you reach your dream in about half the time of normal video or audio lessons. First, print all lessons and PDF tools and take them with you anywhere. Sometimes a tiny smartphone screen just isn't adequate, especially when you're trying to learn something new. The great thing about PDF lessons is that they can be quickly printed and taken anywhere after you download them. In fact, printing out lessons in PDF format can actually save you time when compared to going through the material on a smartphone with a small screen even with the extra printing time. Second, they're a great study tool to boost retention and mastery. Studying video or audio lessons online is a great way to learn a language because students can play and rewind sections as many times as needed until the lesson is mastered. But when you review the same lessons again in PDF format, an incredible thing happens. Your retention dramatically improves. Thanks to time-spaced repetition, seeing the information again in written format helps reinforce the information in your mind and improves both retention and recall. The benefits of learning a language using PDF lessons quickly add up to significant time savings for you, your data plan, and your dream of learning a new language. Third, all lessons in PDF format include in-depth instructor notes. We have thousands of HD video and audio lessons, and each one includes a PDF version with a line-by-line -line transcript, so you can read along with the lesson as it appears online. In addition to the line-by-line -line transcript, all lessons include in-depth instructor notes with more information, sample sentences, explanations, and translations. The additional information and notes help you learn faster and with greater mastery than using the video or audio lessons alone. And when paired with language learning video games, video and audio lessons, or other study aids, our PDF lessons help you reach your dream of learning a new language faster and easier than many traditional classroom settings. Fourth, you can download the world's largest online collection of lessons by real instructors. Planning on going on vacation and don't know if you'll have reliable internet service? If you're learning through PDF lessons, it's not a problem. Once you download lessons in PDF format to your smartphone, PC, or favorite media device, they are yours to use and keep forever. Once downloaded, you can either print out or access your lessons in PDF format, regardless of internet access. When you consistently learn through PDF lessons, the time savings and benefits quickly compound. From quicker access to faster learning, PDF lessons can potentially reduce total study time required to learn a concept. Our PDF lessons include instructor notes and supplemental resources that help you learn faster and with less effort. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Are you afraid of making mistakes in your target language? Afraid you'll never ever be able to have a conversation or give a presentation? Or maybe you're afraid of something else? In this video, we'll cover four fears related to language learning and how to overcome them. The first one is, I'm afraid I'm not good enough to speak. I freeze. Do you feel like you're not good enough to speak yet? A lot of people can relate to this one. Probably all language learners have felt this at some point. It's a pretty common fear. Here are some tips to overcome it. First, speak from day one. The best way to get good at speaking is to practice speaking. If you're holding yourself back because you think you're not good enough, you're making a mistake. That's exactly why you're not improving. You need to open your mouth and start talking. Second, 
If you're not sure what to say to start speaking, consider practicing with existing dialogues. In our lessons, you get scripts for introducing yourself, making small talk, ordering food, expressing opinions, and much more. If you're looking for some things to use for speaking practice, the lessons will give you the exact lines and conversations. Our third tip, learn with your own teacher with our Premium Plus plan. With Premium Plus, you get an actual native speaker teacher to tell you what to say and how to say it. You can actually learn to speak with the help of a real native teacher. Fear number two is, I'm afraid I'll never be fluent. This is a common fear for beginner learners. Once you start improving and seeing progress, this goes away. When you're just starting out with a new language, fluency can feel like an impossible goal. There are so many new things to learn and so many methods you can use. It's easy to get overwhelmed with all the options, but you can't let yourself fall into that trap. The longer you keep at it, the better your language skills will become. And slowly, you'll stop worrying about fluency. What's important is that you put in time and continue working on moving forward. So, how do you overcome worries about never becoming fluent? How do you motivate yourself to continue? First, set small, specific goals instead of just saying, I want to become fluent. How do you know when you've become fluent? Fluency is hard to determine. Instead of creating a vague, hard to understand goal for yourself, focus on working towards smaller goals. For example, set goals like being able to introduce yourself or having a five minute conversation. Something you can measure so you'll know when you've reached it. Fluency can be difficult to measure. If you set goals that you can measure, you can track your progress. This helps keep your motivation up over time. The third fear is, I'm afraid I'm not actually learning or making progress. If you're afraid you're not making progress, there are a few things you can do right now. First of all, review. A lot of people hear a new phrase once and think they'll remember it, but that usually doesn't happen. So when they forget what they've learned, they get worried that they're not learning or that the lessons don't work. But the truth is you have to review again and again to truly master something. Second, use the dashboard to track your progress. If numbers and data are helpful for you as you track your learning, check out our dashboard. It tracks your progress and gives you dynamic reports. Third, try a harder lesson on the site. You might not understand it all at first, and that's okay. You'll be able to after some study. All lessons come with line-by-line -line translations and our teachers explain every single word. Break down these harder lessons. If you have to work a little more slowly, it's okay. When you finish the lesson, you can be sure of your progress because you'll be able to understand something you didn't understand a few minutes earlier. Fourth, learn one-on-one -on -one with a teacher with our Premium Plus plan. They will personally review your writing and your speaking and will fix your mistakes. Getting regular feedback from a native speaker is a great way to know if you're making progress. It's such a great feeling to hear a native speaker tell you, wow, you're getting good. The fourth fear is, I'm afraid of not understanding anything I hear. This is very common. You hear advanced grammar and vocabulary and it goes completely over your head. You have no idea what you've just heard. Here are some tips for working on this issue. If you're taking an advanced lesson, read along with the script. Reading along with our line-by-line -line dialogue is the best way to improve your understanding of advanced conversations. If you're in a real-life situation, the solution is quite simple. Learn useful phrases like, excuse me, can you say it again slower? Or, can you say it in simpler words? Or even just, I don't understand. There's nothing wrong with saying that you didn't understand something or asking for help. These are some common fears for most language learners, and we hope these tips help you. Is there anything else that you're afraid of when it comes to learning another language? Let us know in the comments and maybe we can share some suggestions for how to overcome them. For the tools we've talked about in this video and much more, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time, bye. Are you struggling to reach your language learning goals or losing motivation for learning? In this video, we're going to talk about how to reach your goals, how to enjoy the process and the importance of rewarding yourself. Part one, how to reach your language goals. It's pretty exciting when you reach a goal. You know your hard work has paid off and you can see your results. 
But how do you set goals to ensure you can reach them and get that feeling of satisfaction? The best way to see real results and achieve your language learning goals is to set small, measurable goals. Many people make the mistake of setting big, vague goals, like, I want to be fluent, or I want to speak a new language. Then they download an app or get a textbook and they try to reach their goal. But they quickly give up because the goal they've set for themselves is too overwhelming. This is why it's important to set small, measurable, monthly or weekly goals from the beginning of your studies. Reaching your goals helps you develop confidence in yourself and your ability to get things done. For example, you might make it a goal to be able to have a one-minute conversation by the end of your first month of studies and have a two-minute conversation by the end of month two. Maybe after six months, you aim to have a 10-minute conversation with someone. Specific, measurable goals like these help you track your progress and prevent you from getting overwhelmed. By creating small goals like these, you set yourself up for success. When you reach one of your goals, even if it's a small one, you feel a sense of accomplishment. This helps you enjoy the learning process, which is the next topic we're going to focus on. Part two, how to enjoy the language learning process. If you're always focused on goals and results though, how do you enjoy the process of learning a language? Okay, so let's say that in addition to larger goals, you've made small realistic goals like learning 100 words in a month. That's three to four words per day. Goals like these are very easy to accomplish, and when you complete them, it feels good. This is one of the enjoyable parts of learning a language. So, imagine accomplishing small goals all throughout your week. It's a great way to keep your motivation up and enjoy the process of learning. Smaller goals can help you stay on track and keep your confidence up. When we feel like we're not making progress, we can get frustrated and lose motivation. Think about days when you're super busy at work or at school. Some days, you might be so busy you don't complete any tasks. When nothing seems to move forward, we can lose confidence in ourselves and feel like quitting. This is why giving yourself some small, easy to accomplish goals can be extremely helpful. You can approach your studies with confidence because you know that you're working towards your next goal and that you can actually achieve it. Here's something you can try if you feel like your progress has slowed down. Go back and review something you studied a few weeks or a few months earlier. Try to remember how difficult it was at first. Looking over past materials can help us understand how much we've grown. The same thing is true for conversations. When you start learning a language, you'll learn things like how to introduce yourself, ask basic questions, and talk about the weather. After a few months of study, though, you'll learn how to talk about your hobbies, your neighborhood, or your personality. It's sometimes hard to remember just how much progress we've made, but look back on your work from time to time. All those hours you put in are reflected in your current abilities. It's exciting when you realize how far you've come. Of course, some people might also reflect on mistakes they made, especially if these mistakes led to miscommunications with native speakers. While these memories can be embarrassing, they can still be useful for your studies. Try to shift your mindset towards mistakes. Making an embarrassing mistake can be helpful in the long run because we remember the experience vividly and we want to avoid repeating it. If the mistake wasn't so embarrassing, maybe you can laugh about it and use that memory to ensure you make the right decision in the future. Lastly, we want to remind everyone of the most enjoyable part of the language learning process, the new friends, connections, and experiences you gain through the language. You can use the language you're studying as a tool to create friendships, to meet new people, and to travel. If you ever get to a point where learning isn't fun or interesting anymore, take a moment and consider why. Are you getting overwhelmed? Falling behind on your goals? If your schedule has changed or your goals have changed, that's fine. Adjust your study plan and your study goals to make the learning process work for you. Revise your approach and make sure you're enjoying learning. Part three, the importance of rewards. If you haven't gotten into the practice of rewarding yourself for reaching a goal, now is a great time to start. A reward can be a powerful way to motivate yourself to complete a goal. If your reward is travel or event related, it can also act as a finite deadline. This can push you to focus even more. You can decide to reward yourself with something you buy, with an experience, or maybe just with some time to relax. Choose a reward that will work best for you. Positive reinforcement can be very helpful in the learning process. It's one thing to hit a goal and feel good about it, but if you have a reward too, it seals the deal. It helps you keep the cycle going and will help you keep learning. So today we covered goal setting, how to enjoy the process of learning, and the importance of rewards. Make sure you set small, measurable goals in addition to your larger goals. 
find ways to enjoy the process of studying, and make sure to reward yourself for your achievements. Learning a language should be fun and satisfying. For some more resources to help you reach your goals, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to speak and understand more of your target language? If so, of course, you'll need to know more words and phrases than you do now. In this video, we'll cover five ways to master new words and phrases fast. Number one, use our free vocabulary list. This is a free library of vocabulary and phrase lessons for all kinds of situations. You can learn words and phrases for current events, holidays like Halloween and Thanksgiving, and useful topics like the top 10 ways to say hello, conversational phrases, and more. You'll learn phrases that you won't find in textbooks. If you want to learn extra fast, use the slideshow tool. Just tap or click on View Slideshow, then sit back and review the words and phrases. Find the vocabulary list in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. These vocabulary lists are free for all users. Number two, take the audio and video lessons. One of the best ways to learn new words is by hearing and using them in conversations. This is because it gives you the opportunity to understand how the words are actually used. In every lesson dialogue, you'll likely come across some words you don't know, but don't worry because our teachers translate everything. When you hear the conversation again at the end of the lesson, you'll be familiar with the words you didn't know at first. Number three, learn with our 2000 most common words list. A quick question, how many words do you think you need for conversational fluency? 3000, 5000? It's actually not as many as you think. Language experts say you need about 1500 words to reach conversational fluency. With our 2,000 most common words list, you'll get access to key vocabulary words you need to boost your conversation skills. The words are broken down into simple categories, such as adjectives, nouns, verbs, food, drinks, numbers, months, and so on. So you can go category by category and focus on what you're most interested in first. With this tip, we're not talking about paper flashcards. We're talking about the smart flashcards that you can find in our premium study tools. This is an automatic system individualized for each member based on their study needs. First, you'll use the cards to check your knowledge. Then, according to your answers, the cards will be sorted according to which words you need more practice with. Words that you struggle with will be shown to you more and more. You'll see words that you know well less often. This system helps you study more efficiently. It displays the words you need to work on and knows when you should refresh your knowledge. This helps make sure you don't forget vocabulary. In every study session, these cards will help you refresh your memory on the words you learned last time and introduce new words. Number five, use the words. After you learn a new word, using it right away is crucial to remembering it. So when you're done with a lesson or a vocab list, here's something you can do. Leave a comment. Make up a sample sentence and post it in the comment section. Write it down in a notebook or shadow the word with a lessons dialogue. Our language learning program is full of tools that can help you speak more. Just pick one and get started. If you want to unlock all of these study tools, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey everyone! Welcome to the Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is five ways to make sure you start on the right foot with language learning. Ever wondered if you're on the right path with your language learning or if you're studying the right things and taking the right steps? 
Well, today you'll learn how to start on the right foot with your language learning journey. We'll talk about one, why you must know your reason for learning the language, two, how to set fail-proof goals and rewards, three, how to match your daily routine to your learning so that you don't struggle with the actual learning, four, why you need anchor points for long-term motivation, and five, how to improve faster with ongoing assessment. How to start off on the right foot with your language learning journey. There are five things you, as a language learner, need to address if you want to start off on the right foot. Here they are. One, your reason for learning. Two, your goal and reward. Three, matching your routine to your medium. Four, anchor points. And five, assessment. If you get these squared away in your first month, you'll be set up to succeed with any language goal you set. And today, we'll walk you through each point. The first one, your reason for learning. Why are you learning the language? So why is thinking about your why so important? Here's an example. Think back to when you were a kid and you were trying to save money. What was the first thing you wanted to buy and how much did it cost? You probably still remember what it was and how much it cost. And because you knew the specific price, you were able to save up for it. If not, at the very least, you made more progress than if you just said, I want to save money, with no specific purpose in mind. And that's the thing. If you know precisely why you're doing something, it's easy to tie a goal to it. And there are all kinds of reasons to learn a language. There's travel, family, friends, love, or maybe you're living in a country that speaks it. So knowing your reason clarifies your mission and gives you motivation from the start. Now, some reasons are stronger than others. For example, living in a country that speaks the language is a powerful reason. You need it for survival. If your reason for learning is something simpler, like, I just want to watch TV in that language, it's not exactly something you need to survive. Does it matter whether you have a strong reason or not? Not necessarily. Strong reasons help with motivation initially, but people with strong reasons can and do fail, and people with weak reasons succeed. It's all up to the individual. But the point is, you need to know why you're doing this. And that's enough for you to take the first step. The second point, goals and rewards. Once you've clarified your reason, it's time to set your goals. If you want to succeed, your goal can't just be, I want to be fluent one day. Why? Because this tells you nothing about how you'll achieve it or when you'll reach fluency. It's too vague. Your goal needs to be small, measurable, realistic, and have a deadline, so you can clearly see the steps you need to take to reach your goal. Instead of saying, I want to be fluent one day, which you can't measure and can't precisely determine, aim for, for example, 30 words or one minute of conversation. You can measure these goals. If you have a deadline, like by next month, you know your time frame. And unlike a goal like, I want to be fluent, a goal like, I want to be able to talk for one minute is much more realistic. Now, what about rewards? Now that you've set a goal, you need to tie rewards to your goal. Why rewards? Shouldn't you work hard first and worry about rewards later? Because rewards are powerful motivators, you should be working hard. But hard work often is not fun, and you need something to push you through. When you come home after a long day of work on a rainy day, soaking wet, the last thing you want to do is open a book and start studying. It's so much easier to turn on Netflix or something. But having that reward reminds you, if I achieve this, then I get that. So defining what's in it for me, what do I get, boosts your motivation. You have something to look forward to and get you through times when you don't feel like doing work. The third point is, match your routine to the study medium. Once you have your goals and rewards, you need to fit your language learning into your current life and daily routine. How? Sit down and write out your daily schedule for every day of the week. For example, wake up at 7 a.m., breakfast at 8 a.m., get on the bus at 9 a.m., work from 9.30 a.m., lunch at 1 p.m., and so on. Do this for every day of the week. That way, you can see where you can fit in learning. For example, if you ride the bus in the morning, you can use that time to listen to our audio lessons. Why do this? Well, language learning is a brand new routine. If you don't work from your existing daily routines, it may not work out. For example, if you decide to wake up an hour earlier to study, now you're adding two new routines, waking up earlier and learning a language at once. One is hard enough, but two makes it even harder. 
You may not wake up on time. You may not get out of bed. You may fall right back to sleep. The point here is you should piggyback off of your existing routines and use a learning medium that matches your routine. So instead of waking up earlier, keep your daily routine, but look for another way to introduce language learning. Write out your daily routine, see where you spend your time, and then match your routine to learning. If you take walks and listen to music, swap out music for language lessons and listen along. If you take the bus or train, check out our audio and video lessons. If you usually read in the evenings and can focus, try using a textbook. In all of these examples, you're taking an existing routine and adding language learning inside. The fourth point is set anchor points. Anchor points are the connections you make to a language that boost your motivation and keep you attached or anchored to your goal so you don't slip away. So what's an example of an anchor point? For example, if you have friends or relatives that speak the language, and if you're around them and you're exposed to the language, you're more likely to learn. Same thing with watching TV shows in the target language. You're exposed to it more, so your interest in learning naturally goes up. Also, investing in a textbook or learning program, signing up for classes or for a proficiency test. All of these are anchor points that connect you back to the language. Why do you need anchor points? Oftentimes, your initial reason for learning the language isn't as motivating as it used to be. Maybe you were motivated in month one, but not in month five. That's why people with strong reasons might fail. So an anchor point gives you another reason to keep going and boost your motivation. And also, oftentimes, the reason we start isn't the same as the reason we continue. Anchor points are not something you need to worry about in your first month of learning, but adding them in the second month and afterward will help you keep going. Can you think of any anchor points you can add? Leave a comment. Finally, the fifth point is you need assessment. Now that you have goals, rewards, a routine, and anchor points, it's not enough to learn a language alone in a vacuum. You need feedback and course correction from a native speaker. With our learning program, you can learn with your very own teacher. You can also leave comments on lessons and get answers from the others. Or you can find a tutor of your own someone that will assess your progress and correct you as needed. So, let's recap. There are five things you, as a language learner, need to address if you want to start off on the right foot. One, clarify your reason for learning. Two, set goals and rewards. Three, match your routine with your study medium. Four, set anchor points. And five, get ongoing assessment. So, thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to deal with missed language goals and failure. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Want to cut your language studying time in half? In this video, you'll discover how learning a language using PDF lessons is convenient, efficient, and can help you cut your studying time nearly in half. Many people give up on their dream of learning a second language because traditional classroom instruction is too much of a hassle. Between getting to class, studying on someone else's schedule, and just the sheer expense of the books and tuition, traditional learning can be tough. Many people simply give up. Online classes are an option, but sometimes limited data plans can derail the dream of learning a new language. Fortunately, there is a solution, learning language using PDF lesson notes. Let's take a closer look at how studying language lessons in PDF format can help you reach your dream in about half the time of normal video or audio lessons. First, print all lessons and PDF tools and take them with you anywhere. Sometimes a tiny smartphone screen just isn't adequate, especially when you're trying to learn something new. The great thing about PDF lessons is that they can be quickly printed and taken anywhere after you download them. In fact, printing out lessons in PDF format can actually save you time when compared to going through the material on a smartphone with a small screen, even with the extra printing time. Second, they're a great study tool to boost retention and mastery. Studying video or audio lessons online is a great way to learn a language because students can play and rewind sections as many times as needed until the lesson is mastered. 
But when you review the same lessons again in PDF format, an incredible thing happens. Your retention dramatically improves. Thanks to time-spaced repetition, seeing the information again in written format helps reinforce the information in your mind and improves both retention and recall. The benefits of learning a language using PDF lessons quickly add up to significant time savings for you, your data plan, and your dream of learning a new language. Third, all lessons in PDF format include in-depth instructor notes. We have thousands of HD video and audio lessons, and each one includes a PDF version with a line-by-line -line transcript, so you can read along with the lesson as it appears online. In addition to the line-by-line -line transcript, all lessons include in-depth instructor notes with more information, sample sentences, explanations, and translations. The additional information and notes help you learn faster and with greater mastery than using the video or audio lessons alone. And when paired with language learning video games, video and audio lessons, or other study aids, our PDF lessons help you reach your dream of learning a new language faster and easier than many traditional classroom settings. Fourth, you can download the world's largest online collection of lessons by real instructors. Planning on going on vacation and don't know if you'll have reliable internet service? If you're learning through PDF lessons, it's not a problem. Once you download lessons in PDF format to your smartphone, PC, or favorite media device, they are yours to use and keep forever. Once downloaded, you can either print out or access your lessons in PDF format, regardless of internet access. When you consistently learn through PDF lessons, the time savings and benefits quickly compound. From quicker access to faster learning, PDF lessons can potentially reduce total study time required to learn a concept. Our PDF lessons include instructor notes and supplemental resources that help you learn faster and with less effort. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Are you afraid of making mistakes in your target language? Afraid you'll never ever be able to have a conversation or give a presentation? Or maybe you're afraid of something else? In this video, we'll cover four fears related to language learning and how to overcome them. The first one is, I'm afraid I'm not good enough to speak. I freeze. Do you feel like you're not good enough to speak yet? A lot of people can relate to this one. Probably all language learners have felt this at some point. It's a pretty common fear. Here are some tips to overcome it. First, speak from day one. The best way to get good at speaking is to practice speaking. If you're holding yourself back because you think you're not good enough, you're making a mistake. That's exactly why you're not improving. You need to open your mouth and start talking. Second, if you're not sure what to say to start speaking, consider practicing with existing dialogues. In our lessons, you get scripts for introducing yourself, making small talk, ordering food, expressing opinions, and much more. If you're looking for some things to use for speaking practice, the lessons will give you the exact lines and conversations. Our third tip, learn with your own teacher with our Premium Plus plan. With Premium Plus, you get an actual native speaker teacher to tell you what to say and how to say it. You can actually learn to speak with the help of a real native teacher. Fear number two is, I'm afraid I'll never be fluent. This is a common fear for beginner learners. Once you start improving and seeing progress, this goes away. When you're just starting out with a new language, fluency can feel like an impossible goal. There are so many new things to learn and so many methods you can use. It's easy to get overwhelmed with all the options, but you can't let yourself fall into that trap. The longer you keep at it, the better your language skills will become. And slowly, you'll stop worrying about fluency. What's important is that you put in time and continue working on moving forward. So, how do you overcome worries about never becoming fluent? How do you motivate yourself to continue? First, set small, specific goals instead of just saying, I want to become fluent. How do you know when you've become fluent? Fluency is hard to determine. Instead of creating a vague, hard to understand goal for yourself, focus on working towards smaller goals. For example, set goals like being able to introduce yourself or having a five minute conversation. Something you can measure so you'll know when you've reached it. 
Fluency can be difficult to measure. If you set goals that you can measure, you can track your progress. This helps keep your motivation up over time. The third fear is, I'm afraid I'm not actually learning or making progress. If you're afraid you're not making progress, there are a few things you can do right now. First of all, review. A lot of people hear a new phrase once and think they'll remember it, but that usually doesn't happen. So when they forget what they've learned, they get worried that they're not learning or that the lessons don't work. But the truth is you have to review again and again to truly master something. Second, use the dashboard to track your progress. If numbers and data are helpful for you as you track your learning, check out our dashboard. It tracks your progress and gives you dynamic reports. Third, try a harder lesson on the site. You might not understand it all at first, and that's okay. You'll be able to, after some study. All lessons come with line-by-line -line translations, and our teachers explain every single word. Break down these harder lessons. If you have to work a little more slowly, it's okay. When you finish the lesson, you can be sure of your progress because you'll be able to understand something you didn't understand a few minutes earlier. Fourth, learn one-on-one -on -one with a teacher with our Premium Plus plan. They will personally review your writing and your speaking and will fix your mistakes. Getting regular feedback from a native speaker is a great way to know if you're making progress. It's such a great feeling to hear a native speaker tell you, wow, you're getting good. The fourth fear is, I'm afraid of not understanding anything I hear. This is very common. You hear advanced grammar and vocabulary and it goes completely over your head. You have no idea what you've just heard. Here are some tips for working on this issue. If you're taking an advanced lesson, read along with the script. Reading along with our line-by-line -line dialogue is the best way to improve your understanding of advanced conversations. If you're in a real-life situation, the solution is quite simple. Learn useful phrases like, excuse me, can you say it again slower? Or, can you say it in simpler words? Or even just, I don't understand. There's nothing wrong with saying that you didn't understand something or asking for help. These are some common fears for most language learners, and we hope these tips help you. Is there anything else that you're afraid of when it comes to learning another language? Let us know in the comments, and maybe we can share some suggestions for how to overcome them. For the tools we've talked about in this video and much more, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Are you struggling to reach your language learning goals or losing motivation for learning? In this video, we're going to talk about how to reach your goals, how to enjoy the process, and the importance of rewarding yourself. Part 1. How to reach your language goals. It's pretty exciting when you reach a goal. You know your hard work is paid off, and you can see your results. But how do you set goals to ensure you can reach them and get that feeling of satisfaction? The best way to see real results and achieve your language learning goals is to set small, measurable goals. Many people make the mistake of setting big, vague goals, like, I want to be fluent, or I want to speak a new language. Then they download an app or get a textbook and they try to reach their goal. But they quickly give up because the goal they've set for themselves is too overwhelming. This is why it's important to set small, measurable, monthly or weekly goals from the beginning of your studies. Reaching your goals helps you develop confidence in yourself and your ability to get things done. For example, you might make it a goal to be able to have a one-minute conversation by the end of your first month of studies and have a two-minute conversation by the end of month two. Maybe after six months, you aim to have a 10-minute conversation with someone. Specific, measurable goals like these help you track your progress and prevent you from getting overwhelmed. By creating small goals like these, you set yourself up for success. When you reach one of your goals, even if it's a small one, you feel a sense of accomplishment. This helps you enjoy the learning process, which is the next topic we're going to focus on. Part 2. How to enjoy the language learning process. If you're always focused on goals and results, though, how do you enjoy the process of learning a language? Okay, so let's say that in addition to larger goals, you've made small, realistic goals like learning 100 words in a month. That's three to four words per day. Goals like these are very easy to accomplish, and when you complete them, it feels good. This is one of the enjoyable parts of learning a language. So, 
Imagine accomplishing small goals all throughout your week. It's a great way to keep your motivation up and enjoy the process of learning. Smaller goals can help you stay on track and keep your confidence up. When we feel like we're not making progress, we can get frustrated and lose motivation. Think about days when you're super busy at work or at school. Some days, you might be so busy you don't complete any tasks. When nothing seems to move forward, we can lose confidence in ourselves and feel like quitting. This is why giving yourself some small, easy to accomplish goals can be extremely helpful. You can approach your studies with confidence because you know that you're working towards your next goal and that you can actually achieve it. Here's something you can try if you feel like your progress has slowed down. Go back and review something you studied a few weeks or a few months earlier. Try to remember how difficult it was at first. Looking over past materials can help us understand how much we've grown. The same thing is true for conversations. When you start learning a language, you'll learn things like how to introduce yourself, ask basic questions, and talk about the weather. After a few months of study, though, you'll learn how to talk about your hobbies, your neighborhood, or your personality. It's sometimes hard to remember just how much progress we've made, but look back on your work from time to time. All those hours you put in are reflected in your current abilities. It's exciting when you realize how far you've come. Of course, some people might also reflect on mistakes they made, especially if these mistakes led to miscommunications with native speakers. While these memories can be embarrassing, they can still be useful for your studies. Try to shift your mindset towards mistakes. Making an embarrassing mistake can be helpful in the long run because we remember the experience vividly and we want to avoid repeating it. If the mistake wasn't so embarrassing, maybe you can laugh about it and use that memory to ensure you make the right decision in the future. Lastly, we want to remind everyone of the most enjoyable part of the language learning process, the new friends, connections, and experiences you gain through the language. You can use the language you're studying as a tool to create friendships, to meet new people, and to travel. If you ever get to a point where learning isn't fun or interesting anymore, take a moment and consider why. Are you getting overwhelmed? Falling behind on your goals? If your schedule has changed or your goals have changed, that's fine. Adjust your study plan and your study goals to make the learning process work for you. Revise your approach and make sure you're enjoying learning. Part three, the importance of rewards. If you haven't gotten into the practice of rewarding yourself for reaching a goal, now is a great time to start. A reward can be a powerful way to motivate yourself to complete a goal. If your reward is travel or event related, it can also act as a finite deadline. This can push you to focus even more. You can decide to reward yourself with something you buy, with an experience, or maybe just with some time to relax. Choose a reward that will work best for you. Positive reinforcement can be very helpful in the learning process. It's one thing to hit a goal and feel good about it. But if you have a reward too, it seals the deal. It helps you keep the cycle going and will help you keep learning. So today we covered goal setting, how to enjoy the process of learning, and the importance of rewards. Make sure you set small, measurable goals in addition to your larger goals. Find ways to enjoy the process of studying and make sure to reward yourself for your achievements. Learning a language should be fun and satisfying. For some more resources to help you reach your goals, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speak and understand more of your target language? If so, of course, you'll need to know more words and phrases than you do now. In this video, we'll cover five ways to master new words and phrases fast. Number one, use our free vocabulary list. This is a free library of vocabulary and phrase lessons for all kinds of situations. You can learn words and phrases for current events, holidays like Halloween and Thanksgiving, and useful topics like the top 10 ways to say hello, conversational phrases, and more. You'll learn phrases that you won't find in textbooks. If you want to learn extra fast, use the slideshow tool. Just tap or click on View Slideshow, then sit back and review the words and phrases. Find the vocabulary list in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. These vocabulary lists are free for all users. Number two, take the audio and video lessons. One of the best ways to learn new words is by hearing and using them in conversations. 
This is because it gives you the opportunity to understand how the words are actually used. In every lesson dialogue, you'll likely come across some words you don't know. But don't worry, because our teachers translate everything. When you hear the conversation again at the end of the lesson, you'll be familiar with the words you didn't know at first. Number three, learn with our 2,000 most common words list. A quick question. How many words do you think you need for conversational fluency? 3,000? 5,000? It's actually not as many as you think. Language experts say you need about 1,500 words to reach conversational fluency. With our 2,000 most common words list, you'll get access to key vocabulary words you need to boost your conversation skills. The words are broken down into simple categories, such as adjectives, nouns, verbs, food, drinks, numbers, months, and so on. So you can go category by category and focus on what you're most interested in first. With this tip, we're not talking about paper flashcards. We're talking about the smart flashcards that you can find in our premium study tools. This is an automatic system individualized for each member based on their study needs. First, you'll use the cards to check your knowledge. Then, according to your answers, the cards will be sorted according to which words you need more practice with. Words that you struggle with will be shown to you more and more. You'll see words that you know well less often. This system helps you study more efficiently. It displays the words you need to work on and knows when you should refresh your knowledge. This helps make sure you don't forget vocabulary. In every study session, these cards will help you refresh your memory on the words you learned last time and introduce new words. Number five, use the words. After you learn a new word, using it right away is crucial to remembering it. So when you're done with a lesson or a vocab list, here's something you can do. Leave a comment. Make up a sample sentence and post it in the comment section. Write it down in a notebook or shadow the word with a lesson's dialogue. Our language learning program is full of tools that can help you speak more. Just pick one and get started. If you want to unlock all of these study tools, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to deal with missed language goals and failure. Have you ever failed to reach a goal? If you're planning on learning a language as your 2021 New Year's resolution, or if you just want to know how to get back up and recover from language learning failure, then you'll like this episode. So keep watching. But first, here are this month's new free lessons and resources. First, the Making Mistakes Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to respond to mistakes in conversations? This brand new cheat sheet will teach you all the must know phrases for correcting others and asking for corrections. Download it for free right now. Second, the 400 Everyday Phrases for Beginners ebook. This bonus ebook will teach you over 400 words and phrases related to daily activities like waking up, making breakfast, going to work or school, and much more. Third, the Shops Around the City vocab lesson. Learn how to say mall, supermarket, restaurant, bakery, and much more with this quick vocabulary bonus. Fourth, do you know how to express holiday greetings in your target language? Access this one minute lesson to learn phrases like happy holidays and have a happy new year. Fifth, must know winter clothing vocab. Do you know how to say jacket or scarf in your target language? If you don't, then this next one minute lesson will give you all the words you need for winter clothing. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to deal with missed language goals and failure. If you've ever set a goal, you've probably dealt with failure. 
A lot of people set goals around January when they set their New Year's resolutions. If you're planning on setting a resolution to learn a new language in 2021, you'll want to pay attention. Now, in this video, when we say failure, we mean you set a goal, but you don't reach it. For example, if the goal was learning 100 words in a month, either you learned some words, meaning you took some steps, or you did nothing at all, meaning you learned zero words. Failure usually happens for one of two reasons. One, you set an unrealistic goal that's too hard for you or your routine or your lifestyle. For example, learning 1,000 words in a month can be overwhelming. Or two, it could be for reasons outside of your control. Maybe you got sick, or you're busy at work and have no time, or you're moving. Life can get in the way. So how do you deal with failure? Do you feel disappointed? Do you quit? Do you keep trying? Leave us a comment and let us know. But if you want to succeed with your future language goals, you'll need to change your outlook on failure and learn how to recover. So here are five ways to deal with missed goals. One, ask yourself, is this outside of my control or inside of my control? For example, you could be moving, you might have overtime at work, you may get sick, and life might just get in the way. These situations are outside of your control, so there's no need to blame yourself. If they were inside your control, it's likely you set a goal that was too hard or simply unrealistic for your current lifestyle. Why ask this? If the situation is outside of your control, you should keep on going. If the situation is within your control, you can work on fixing it, and we'll tell you how in just a bit. Second, if you feel disappointed about a missed goal, which is normal, use that feeling as motivation. Don't stop your language learning journey just because you're feeling disappointed. Third, understand that this isn't the last time you're going to fail. There'll be goals that you'll hit and there'll be goals that you miss. That's just a fact of life. And in a way, that's good news because you'll get used to failing. You'll learn not to feel too bad about it and you'll learn how to keep on going. Fourth, Understand that as long as you spend time on the language, that's good enough. Goals are also meant to get you moving in a certain direction. So as long as you made some strides in the right direction, that's better than nothing. So if your goal was to learn 100 words, but you learned only 20, 20 is better than zero. You still started moving in the right direction. And if you didn't reach 100 this time, you can hit 100 in the future. It's just a matter of time. Fifth. Recover from failure by setting smaller goals. Why set smaller goals? If you failed to learn 100 words, wouldn't it make sense to try that goal again? Or double up, punish yourself, and learn 200 to make up for lost time? In schools, when we miss homework, we have to make it up and stay on track with new homework. This doesn't make sense with goals. The reason is, if you fail again, it's because that goal is too far out of your reach. Either you yourself can't handle it or your current situation, like being busy at work or having a private matter, doesn't give you much time. By aiming lower, you can at least get back on track to succeeding at reaching a goal. You're getting something done and you're getting your confidence back up. Because if you couldn't reach 100 words last time, chances are you won't reach it this time. So try 50 words, 30 words. Give yourself a chance to succeed on your own terms. And that's it. Don't let the small failures keep you from making a big success. Make your goals work for you. Let's recap one more time. One, ask yourself, is this outside of my control or inside of my control? Two, if you feel disappointed, use that feeling as motivation. Three, understand that this isn't the last time you're going to fail. Four, understand that as long as you spend time on the language, that's good enough. And five, recover from failure by setting smaller goals. If you're planning on setting a language learning resolution for 2021, let us know what it is. Leave a comment. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time we'll talk about how to get back on track after language learning failure. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. What are the best ways to learn a language on the go? You might be surprised to find there are lots of moments throughout the day we can transform into language learning opportunities. These might be on your commute, 
during an exercise session, or even just when you're trying to kill some time. In this video, we'll introduce you to three tips for learning on the go. Number one, how to learn a language on the go. Many of us are probably used to studying when we have time to sit down and concentrate. We take out textbooks and notepads and prepare to focus our attention for an hour or so, like in a classroom. It might be hard to think of studying in other settings, like when you're sitting on a bus or are stuck in traffic, but there are still things you can do, even if your hands are full. For example, think about your commute. How much time do you spend traveling to and from work, school, or other activities throughout the week? If you have a one-hour commute every day, that's a lot of time you could be spending working on your language skills. Even if you're not ready to devote your whole commute to study, a little bit every day will help. But how do you study in environments like these? By changing the way you approach your learning. These days, many people now have a computer right in their pocket. Smartphones make it easy to access many different kinds of study materials. Depending on our needs and the time we have available, we can watch YouTube videos, listen to podcasts, study vocabulary, review infographics, and more. There are many different ways to build our language skills, and we can choose study methods that work for our schedules, our personalities, and our goals. There are a lot of different methods to consider. So in part two, we're going to share a few ideas to help you get started. Number two, five easy ways to learn a language on the go. If you're standing on a crowded train, you can't pull out a book or do workbook problems. If you're exercising, it's probably impossible to review textbooks or take notes. If you're driving, you need to make sure you're watching the road. So how do you transform times like these into study opportunities? Situations like these are great for audio and video lessons. We have huge libraries of both, so you can choose whichever is best for you. All you need to study is a smartphone, a lesson, and a pair of earphones. Just press play and watch a video or listen to an audio lesson, like you would with music. During your commute or exercise session, you'll hear a simple conversation focused on a specific goal, like introducing yourself or ordering food. Then, our teachers will explain the words and phrases. In just a few minutes, you'll be working on mastering an entire conversation. Our second study method suggestion is our app, Innovative Language 101. You can download it for free for the iPhone, iPad, and Android. This will allow you to take your lessons with you wherever you go. Study idea three is for those of you who want something super quick and easy. You can use it to kick off your studies each day. It's our word of the day email. Every day, you get an email with a new word, example sentences, audio, and a picture to help make it stick in your mind. If you check your email during your commute, you can also check the word of the day. Our last two study method ideas are about tools that can help you remember what you study. First is our vocab slideshow tool. This study tool is available on all vocab lists and lessons. Just press play and listen to words and phrases one by one. You can even set the slideshow on a loop and listen to the words over and over. Finally, our last suggestion is our smart flashcards. These flashcards use spaced repetition to help you study and remember words, and the cards are mobile friendly. The cards remember your progress and quiz you on words at the right times. This helps ensure you don't forget the things you study. To access these, visit the site on your phone and find the flashcards in the vocabulary menu. Swipe through as you study. Our system will remember your progress. If you get a word wrong, you'll see it more often. The flashcards know to quiz you again and again until you remember that word. Number three, be consistent. If you can find new ways to use your time and work towards your language goals, great. But remember to be consistent. Using all or even part of your commute or your downtime to study can be a fantastic way to make progress, but you need to make sure to do it regularly. Try to build a habit of starting a video lesson as soon as your commute begins, or pressing play on an audio lesson as soon as you begin a jog. Creating these habits will help you stick with your study methods long term and will lead to greater progress. When you decide to learn a language, it's exciting, but there are lots of different ways to approach your studies. What can you do to make sure you start things off in the best way for yourself? In this video, we'll cover six things for you to consider to get you started on the right foot. First, what is your reason for learning? Thinking about your why for studying a language can be so important. If you know why you're doing something, it becomes easier to create goals. There are lots of reasons to learn a language. Travel, family, friends, love, and even the experience of living in a new country. Clarifying your reason for learning helps you define your mission and gives you motivation right from the start. 
some reasons for learning may be stronger than others. If you live in a country that speaks the language you need to learn, you're probably highly motivated to study because your progress will directly affect your daily life and relationships. If, however, your reason for learning is something like, I want to be able to watch TV shows in that language, your motivation might not be as high as the person in the first example, but that's okay. Everyone has a different, unique reason for wanting to learn a language. Take some time to understand what you want to get out of your studies. This is a helpful first step. Second, set the right goals. Once you've clarified your reason for learning, it's time to set your goals. Don't make goals like, I want to be fluent one day. This type of goal is problematic because there's no deadline for the goal, no clues about how you'll achieve your goal, and no way of knowing when you've reached fluency. Your goals need to be small, measurable, realistic, and have a deadline. Try making monthly goals instead of yearly goals. Saying, I want to be fluent one day, isn't helpful. Instead, make a goal like, be able to speak for one minute by the end of the month. A goal like this gives you a target, a skill to develop, and a deadline. You have one month to practice your speaking skills enough to be able to talk for one minute. You can set a timer and track how long you're able to speak. This is also a realistic goal. Learning enough to speak for one minute in one month is reasonable. You can even think of how you might reward yourself for achieving the goal. Third, reward yourself for achieving your goals. You can determine your rewards when you determine your goals. Rewards are powerful motivators. You should be working consistently towards your goals, but there will undoubtedly be times when the work isn't fun and you need something to push you through. When you come home after a long day of work or school on a rainy day, maybe the last thing you want to do is open a book and start studying. It's so much easier to turn on Netflix or scroll social media, but if you have a reward, you can use it as a motivator. As mentioned before, it's important to remember why you're learning a language and what your goals are. For many people, thinking about the rewards they'll get along the way boosts their motivation. If you give yourself something to look forward to, it can help you get through the times you may not feel like putting in the work. Fourth, match your routine to the study medium. The word routine here refers to your everyday routine. You need to understand your personal schedule and your personality to make a study schedule that's right for you. It may come as a surprise that this is a step where many people fail. They think they can do a lot more than they actually can, get overwhelmed and quit. In the end, the people who give up after just a few weeks of hard study are only able to do a fraction of what they plan to be able to do. It can be tough to understand your own limitations. We all like to think we're capable of doing anything we put our minds to, at any time, on any day. But the reality is, there will be times when we're tired, bored, or just don't feel like studying. We need to be able to plan for times like these. To do that, we need to understand our own limitations. Try this. Write out your weekly schedule. Where do you have some existing time that you can spend on studies? For example, maybe you have some time on your commute every day, or some time during a lunch break. If you're super busy, like most people, look for places in your day that naturally make sense, instead of trying to create a whole new block of time to devote to your studies. Maybe it's when you visit a cafe, or when you're on the bus or train. See if there's a place where you can match the medium, the learning method, to your existing routine. For example, on your commute in the morning, you can listen to an audio lesson twice a week, or listen once a week after dinner at home while you do chores. Break out some vocabulary flashcards during lunchtime. Maybe you can even find a weekend class. Which brings us to our fifth point. Fifth, anchor points. These are the connections you make to a language that boost your motivation and keep you attached or anchored to your goal. For example, maybe you have friends or relatives that speak the language. And if you're around them and you're exposed to the language, you're more likely to learn. If you don't know anyone who speaks the language, consider making a monetary investment, like a textbook or a learning program. By paying for something, you make a commitment to yourself to use it. Sixth, assessment. It's good to know where you are in your studies and determine if you're making progress. If you're not moving forward, maybe the methods you're using aren't quite right for you. Or maybe you need to find new ways to add studying into your routine to give you more opportunities to learn. But don't do assessments so often that you don't actually have a chance to learn. For example, if you take a test once and get a score you're not happy with, don't immediately take the test again. Give yourself time to study and develop your skills more. 
Then you can come back and try again. Assessment is a great way to keep yourself on track, but don't let tests take over your studies. In this video, we talked about six things to consider when you start learning a language. Figure out your reason for learning, set good goals, and choose rewards. Have anchor points, and make sure to match your routine with the medium of study. And finally, make sure you have the proper approach to assessment of your progress. What was the last new word or phrase you learned? Do you remember? If you can answer this question, then you're using a very important skill for language learning. It's called active recall. Keep watching to learn more about how powerful it is. In this video, we'll cover the best ways to study and remember. So, what is active recall? Active recall is an important part of learning and actually remembering what you've learned. Essentially, it means forcing yourself to remember what you've learned. For example, let's say you're reading a textbook and you learn a new word like hello. Reading is a passive activity. That word or phrase won't last very long in your memory. But then if you ask yourself later, okay, what was that word again? You're using active recall. It's when you try to remember something without looking at the answer. So what's special about this? Typically, when we study for tests, we read and reread textbooks, take notes, highlight some key points, and reread some more. But with this style of studying, you're still looking at the answers and simply reviewing them, right? It's essential that you also study by forcing yourself to remember. Doing this helps improve your memory. So how do we apply this to language learning? What are some tricks that you can use to actually remember what you study? First, try using quick recall. Let's start simple. Tell us in the comments, what was the last word or phrase you learned in your target language? Second, quiz yourself right after studying. After you finish a lesson, ask yourself, what did I learn in this lesson? Go ahead and write down as much as you can remember. You can also ask yourself, what grammar rule did I learn here? Or what was the conversation? And try and recall the dialogue. Do this for every lesson, but don't look at the answers. The point is to recall as much as you can. Third, take notes from memory. Again, don't look at the answers. There's a note feature in each of our lessons to help you do just that. Fourth, take lesson quizzes. You'll find these in each of our lessons. Actually, taking tests or quizzes is a great way to practice active recall since you're forced to remember just the answers. Fifth, use spaced repetition flashcards to master words and phrases. Spaced repetition flashcards quiz you on words and you have to mark whether you know them or you don't. If you know the word, you'll see it again in a few days. And if you don't know a word, you can flip the card and get the answer, but you'll get quizzed on it again and again until you get it right. Sixth, do assignments. If you're a Premium Plus user, you get weekly assignments from your teacher, and these test you on listening, reading, speaking, and writing. These are all ways to use active recall throughout your language learning to make sure you remember everything you study. Great work, here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.